It's the 42nd meeting between the Valdosta State Blazers and your West Georgia Wolves tonight here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. This game really needs no introduction, but we're going to give you one anyways as the West Georgia Wolves battle it out with the Blazers here on Hall of Fame Saturday in Family and Friends Saturday here at the University of West Georgia. Hello again, everybody. Matt Skinner here with you alongside Willie Candler. We'll go to Cade Perry and the third member of our crew here in just a moment. And Willie... As we know, this game is, you can throw out, you can be 0-7, you can be 7-0. and This game, if you win it, you got a bragging rights for 365. Like you said, it doesn't matter what the team records are for this game. Uh, this is one that you star on the schedule before the season even starts. Uh, the players know what they're playing for. A peach basket, wooden, it's not sexy, but hey, we're here to play for it <laughs> and looking forward to a great night of football. What's crazy is, this is the first time we've had it here in Carrollton since 2019. They played back in Carrollton 2019, 2020, COVID, 2021, down in Valdosta, and then last year back in Valdosta again. So really, unfortunately, the last three, four years, haven't had a chance to have it here in Carrollton. The Carrollton's really showed up tonight for this game. Hopefully. Yeah, it has. It's a great atmosphere tonight, great night for football, and it's just great to have football versus Valdosta State back on Rayland Field. And last week, Harrison Frost had a fantastic game. He is going to be your player to watch tonight. Uh, we say fantastic game. He threw four interceptions, but guess what? He threw for also a school record he did. Uh, in the in the ball game as well and got the win on the road against Mississippi College, and he's got to have a good game tonight. He does, to especially versus Valdosta State. You know, great Great job with Harrison Frost, throwing the four interceptions, but keeping his head in the game, coming back when we needed him and just completing the drives. And hey, West Georgia could have hung their hat and headed to the bus and come home at any point, but great resiliency from the team and getting that win last week. I tell you what, Ivory Durham is a guy for Valdosta State that is electric. He's so much fun to watch. Sometimes you wish he was on your team oh, yeah. because he's just so good. He's been there forever, and he's looking to have a big night again tonight for the for the Blazers. Yeah, Ivory Durham. Uh, you know, he did some some dirty things to me when I played versus Valdosta State back in the back in the day. So great that he's still playing. Great athletes having a great season. So hopefully he doesn't have a big game tonight versus the West Georgia Wolves. Well, both teams are about to take the field. This game has been very chippy already. We'll talk about that here in just a moment as we've already had some players or a player ejected in this game. You're not going to want to miss kickoff coming up next right here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Productions, KISS 102.7. As we get ready to go down to the third member of our crew, Cade Perrion, in just a moment, West Georgia in blue uniforms and red helmets. Valdosta coming out in black helmets, white uh, tops and white bottoms. And as we go to the third member of our crew, Cade Perrion, there we go. 
Well, well things are chippy, as we, you say. We've already got one ejection before. As soon as Valdosta State got here, it felt like somebody got ejected. The way it was explained to me was the Valdosta State player was going after a University of West Georgia player only to hit the referee instead. I don't know how that works. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So Sounds kind of like some of Willie Candler's passes back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say, Kate, is you're looking mighty fine down there with the button down shirt, red tie. It's going to be a great night of football. <laughs> it's a little bit Victoria's Secret model, a little bit Larry the Cable Guy. I'm here. I'm ready. Let's raise the peach basket. <laughs> Let's play some football. <laughs> so it's a 15-yard penalty to start the game for Valdosta. So they'll go back to the 20-yard line. The player ejected for Valdosta State's number 51, Michael Gaden. He's one of their top defensive tackles on the year, Willie. A 6'2", 282-pound senior will not get to play his final game as a peach basket. Yeah, you hate that for the player. And look for that to be a theme throughout the whole game tonight is you got to keep your cool. Big rivalry, both sides. Could be some flags. You just got to keep it under control and don't want to hurt your team. So this will be... Valosta kicking from right to left as number 43 will do the kicking. Esten Thiel, and he's got a leg on him. He was the starting kicker last year for Valdosta, one of the top kickers in the conference. Back deep, Ronnie Blackman, who had a very good ball game uh, for the West Georgia Wolves, almost 200 yards receiving an LP. LaPerion Perry back deep as well. They'll end over end kick. Back to Ronnie Blackman. He'll take it from the 11-yard line. Blackman up to the 20. Blackman, 25. Ronnie gets tackled back at the 27, 28-yard line. Good coverage by Valdosta. Tackled there by number 13, Victor Talley. And we are underway here from University Stadium in Rayland Field. And we'll get a chance to look at our player to watch, uh, Harrison Frost for the West Georgia Wolves on offense. Yeah, great kick to start the game with the 15-yard penalty before they kicked it off. And heck, to keep the yep. Wolves on the 26-yard line off the return, that's, that's pretty good. We'll get to talk about our head coaches here in just a moment. As you just saw David Dean a little bit, we'll bring him back up after this first play and talk about all that he's done because he probably has the biggest uh, part in this rivalry of anybody here today. Two wide receivers to each side. Frost looking to throw on first down. He's looking and he'll throw it away. Intended for Steven Peterson as it was intended for number 34. Or uh, it was intended for Steven Peterson. Good coverage. And there's David Dean who had two national championships back at Valdosta State. And he's been here the last three years. And actually the last time West Georgia beat Valdosta State was when David Dean was the coach. Yeah, I actually had to beat him that day. That was, that was a good day, last time we won the Peach Basket here. We go five wide and get it to Zay Britt and on a little screen outside, and we're going to pick up 13 yards and a first down to, to the, oh, they're going to give him 15 yards up to the 42-yard line. Zay Britt, the sophomore out of Oxford High School, gets a first down. Yeah, great play. If we had the UWG replay here, we had him outnumbered. We got the O-lineman out in front and little screen pass for first down for the Wolves. Nice play. That's just an extension of the screen, the, the running game. Absolutely. Yeah, just a different way yeah. of getting the ball outside. We go too tight with Ian Hinkle. He comes in motion. Mason Yost, the other tight end. He'll go back the other way and we'll hand to Jackson Carson for the first time and go right up the middle and we're pushing the pile up for a gain of five across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Look for the running game to be a big part of this game as West uh, Valdosta, one of the worst rush defense teams in the conference. Yeah, they've struggled all year, and particularly last week when they played Mississippi College and had a, had a loss. And look for Jackson Carson. We need him to have a big game in the rushing game tonight. Trips to the right, one to the left. Frost looking, looking, and he's going to get thrown down to the ground. A nice hit there by number 97, Jaden Blunt. Luckily, he was able to get it out to Ronnie Blackman and is going to be third and about five. Luckily, we recovered that. They did not call it uh, intentional grounding or anything, so that's good. Yeah, it looked like we were setting up a screen pass, and usually the O-linemen's just got a stock block for about a second there, but looks like they got out of there too quick and fortunate that that was in, called an incomplete pass. And there you see, well, we'll get to Tremaine Jackson in just a moment. Big third down play here, third and six for the Wolves. Five wide receivers again. Frost steps up, complete, complete to Zari Wilson across the middle. He makes a man miss and gets to the 42-yard line first down, pick up a 10 
for West Georgia. The same thing happened last week, Willie. Hit him right in the numbers and popped straight up. That's why they say catch it with your hands, but That's we'll right. take the catch. Catch it out in front. Great read by Harrison Frost. If you see his eyes, looked right and then came back to the left side. Had Zyrie on a little <laughs> dig route for a first down. Nice pitch and catch for the Wolves. <laughs> Gotta love that. Zyrie Wilson, the Sophomore from Buford High School. Trips to the left, tight right. We'll throw it to Steven Peterson in the slot. We'll get another first down across the 30, driving to the 27-yard line. First and 10 again, West Georgia pick up a 14 yards. Yeah, good read there by Harrison Frost. He has his eyes on the outside linebacker on the play fake, and if that linebacker crashes in, then he's going to throw it right where he was. We call that a replacement throw to his slot guy. Good pick up on first down to get another Wolves first down. A receiver to each side. We go too tight. Mason Yost and now Zach Obi will hand to Jackson Carson up the middle. He busts it 20 up to the 15. And he's still driving wimpy tacklers ahead. A gain of 12 and another first down West Georgia. Yeah, this is all scheme during the week. They must have seen something in the defense that they wanted to attack. And this is a great first drive for the Wolves here. Good run by Jackson getting another Wolves first down. The senior from Phoenix City, Alabama. One of the tops in the Gulf South Conference. He's eighth in the country in touchdown runs with 11. First and 10, ball at the 15-yard line. We go too tight again. We'll give to Carson. He gets up to the 10-yard line. Good, strong run, five yards. Second and five. Yeah, good outside run, to the outside zone run play to the left side, gashing him for five yards on first down. Again, that just opens up the playbook for Coach Dean and Coach Graham. Here comes Trey Williams in the ball game. I don't think we've seen him since the Mississippi College game. I'm having a hard time remembering the last time we saw him. He had a touchdown, touchdown catch. catch. He had a yeah. touchdown catch against Mississippi College, but haven't seen him since then. I'm thinking, yeah, he got a shoulder injury yeah. or something. Upper. Receiver to the left, two receivers right. Williams comes in motion. Now he'll go back the other way. We'll toss it out to Carson. Good block by Parker Gibbs. 10, 8 yard line a gain of about two and a half it's going to be third and about two and a half we're using the motion back and forth this time uh, what kind of motion is that called for people at home yeah really? that could be for two things that's uh, replacement motion so we'll start in one one side of the alignment goes to the other and then comes back to the original alignment and that's just to confuse the defense and they get them mismatched up front we go another tight end. We bring Trey Williams in motion, that same replacement motion. We'll hand it, nope, fake it, and throw it to Trey Williams. He's at the five, he'll walk in, touchdown! Trey Williams walking in for a West Georgia touchdown. The redshirt freshman from Gordon Central High School with his second touchdown catch of the season. And just like that, West Georgia marches down the field on a big drive and a Wolves touchdown. 10 plays, 73 yards, 354 counted up. Yeah, great play right there. He went in motion, got back to his original alignment with the play fake. The linebacker sucked in and had him out in a flat for an easy touchdown. Brock Pellegrino will kick it. Good snap by Skinner. Hogan will hold it. Hold it. It looks good because it is good. Timeout on the field. West Georgia with a big opening drive. That's how you start a football game. Wolves seven, Blazers zero. Right here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans.
Back at it here, University Stadium and Ray Lynn Field. And as you know, this series history goes way back, all the way back to 1983. Last matchup, as you see, was not a good one for the Wolves. And Valdosta actually leads the home series at Carroll in Carrollton 11 to 8 overall. So yeah. we'd like to make it 11 to 9 today. And the Wolves are off to a good start on a 10 play, 73 yard drive that ended to uh, to Trey Williams from Harrison Frost for a. Wolves touchdown. Brock Pellegrino will kick it away, and we'll get to see this high-powered Valdosta State offense coming up here. Uh, back deep for them, probably Seth McGill, if I had to guess, and it is indeed. End over end kick. Seth McGill will take it from the 10-yard line. He's up 15, 20, 25. He busts it 30, 35, 40. And Brock Pellegrino, the kicker, getting a little push out of bounds right there. Got to give the shout out to the kicker on the stop. It's never good when the kicker makes the tackle on the kickoff. But no, it's we'll not. Take... We've got a flag, it looks like, too, Matt, on the field. But I guarantee they're going to call offsides. Uh, yeah, that seems to be a trend that we've had problems with throughout the course of the season so far. And they call offsides on us at least once a game on kickoff. See what he has to say. Without question. Offside. Kicking team. Five yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Every game. I... I, it, it, this is a. I've, ne I've not seen this many offside on a kickoff. Kick yeah, off. that's just something you, have, you don't see called very often, yeah. and it has ha happened often for well, the Wolves this I'd season. I that this is the first year for the head man of the Valdosta State Blazers and this high-powered offense, Tremaine Jackson, as you see him right there, and not the best of years by Valdosta standards, but. I'm telling you, they're still a scary football team with the numbers they're putting up on offense. Yeah, I mean, they've still got the players that we've played against for years now. And with Seth, Seth at running back and Ivory quarterback, they're a talented team. Lost three straight, but they're looking to correct that tonight. Durham looking to throw. He's got Seth McGill open, wide open in the flats. It just, it was a little low throw by Ivory Durham. Couldn't get it out there. We had Marquise, Br or uh, that was Jet Lee uh, coming over in coverage, but to be honest, Wolves better be happy he dropped that. Oh, yeah, it was a little he, short. He had some open grass in front of him. Good break for the Wolves here for forces second down for the Blazers. So two running backs, Jamar Tompkins, both seniors. Those guys are very talented. They'll give to McGill right up the middle. They bust at 45, and the umpire helps make the tackle, uh, and it's good enough for a Valosta State first down. And as we've seen, this, this offensive line, man, and the umpire is hurt. Ooh. Yeah, the umpire took a shot from the face mask of McGill, I'm pretty sure, and he is in a lot of pain. Yeah, it looks like his, his hand got hit pretty hard. We'll have to see if we can wrap that up for him and see what's going on. He just said he broke it. I just read his lips. He said, I just broke it. Oh. And Kate Perrion's down there right there beside him. We'll see what Kate has to say. You read his lips right. Yeah. He is not in a chipper mood. <laughs> I wouldn't be either. Tough, he, way, tough way to start the game. When you take it. A, it may be dislocated, but I'm not going to go over there and look. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, Kerry will, and Dr. Poss will get him fixed up right as we have a new umpire in the ball game and Seth McGill gets the carry gets hit in the backfield by Deontay Overstreet and then about seven other Wolves come and make the stop and who picked them up was that Xavier Robinson that picked them up I think it was it was that's a statement tackle to start the game early dump truck as we call it <laughs> put Seth on his back nice but, tackle by Xavier well he was down there he looked like he was down and yeah. then a little bit of extra fun for the Wolves as all 11 were on, in on that tackle looked like got a swarm to the football and Xavier Robinson and Jalen Tarver last week combined for 26 tackles. We, you know, the first game of the season, Kate Perry told us to watch out for Xavier Robinson. He had a, a team high 14 tackles last week. I think the most tackles on the year. High snap, fakes, throwing out here, and they got a guy blocking downfield, and Ivory Durham tried to throw it to the guy that was blocking. And I guess that was intended for number 85, Ted Hurst, the freshman wideout, and it's third and 11, exactly where you want to keep this offense, behind yeah, the chains. No question. Ivory looks a little bit out of sorts here to start the game with the low pass, and I don't know who he was throwing to there. It looked like he was throwing to a receiver who was blocking and might have just gotten confused with who he was trying to throw it to, but third down and long for the Blazers. 
Third and long, and we're going to have a uh, illegal substitution on us. Durham rolls to his right, going to throw and is complete for a first down, complete out there to number two, B.K. Smith. But unfortunately, we had 12 guys on the field. And regardless, it's a big pickup for Val Austin. It should be a first down. Yeah, we got three flags on the field. Illegal substitution. Defense. I mean, at the snap. That penalty five. Results on the play. First down. Yeah, the Wolves are going to have to do their best to contain Ivory. That's where he can hurt you. He can get outside of the pocket, use his feet uh, like he did in 2000. 18 where he took a 50 yarder to the house right before halftime. He's got quick feet, good speed, and can throw it, so you got to contain him in the pocket. First and 10, Valdosta at the West Georgia 27 yard line. They have trips receivers to the left, one to the right. Seth McGill beside Ivory Durham. He'll send him in motion. Durham going to run a quarterback power right up the middle to the 20. Pow! He got hit hard by MJ Latimer. It don't matter. Ivory Durham has made a steal. He gets eight yards, up second and two now. Yeah, just like I oh said, he, he can run, he's quick. He's got some speed on the top end. and we got. Have you ever been hit that hard right there? I have, okay. yes. <laughs> I got knocked out versus Valdosta back in 2018, and oh. lights were on and no one was home. Uh, oh, man, that's got to be a terrible feeling. Second and three, ball at the 20. First down to make is about the 17 and a half. There are such thing as half yard lines on grass fields. They'll hand it to Seth McGill and we wrap them up. Xavier Robinson shot through. The sophomore out of Langston Hughes High School, the shorter transfer makes the stop about three yards behind the line of scrimmage. He shot out of a cannon right there, Willie. He did, we call that timing the snap and he was right through the gap before the O lineman could even look up, look up and great play by Xavier to shoot through and force a third and long for the Blazers. You heard Xavier on our player spotlight this week, man. Got to talk to him. First time he's ever been interviewed. Really? He's played. He's been an athlete his whole life. That's surprising and with how much time, talent he yeah, has. Yeah. It, it, he was so honored. And it was an honor to interview him. Third and long. Durham looking, looking. We're still trying to get him. He'll throw it and it's going to be illegal touching. We got I flags. I believe. And we got flags everywhere. I'm pretty sure Demetrius Lofton hit Ivory Durham late. We should have illegal touching, though, on Valdosta. <laughs> He threw his hat off, which indicates that the offensive player went out of bounds. So could they offset? They're both they live should. ball penalties, so they should they offset. They should offset. But I don't see a flag from the illegal touching side of things. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 90. After this is to the goal, first down. So what's the, but are they saying it's a catch? That's what I want to know. And credit Ivory Durham, he took a he took a hit. The line judge threw his hat uh, through his hat. We're going to see the instant replay here. Regardless, it's going to be a first down Valdosta. Clock Please reset the game clock to 8:08. He clearly stepped out of bounds on our UWG Productions replay. That should have been illegal touching. Yeah, that should have been a flag and an offset for a replay of third down. We did not force him out of bounds there. And with the rules, if he runs out by himself, then that's a flag. If he oh, were my goodness. Terrible call by the ref there. Inside the 10 down to the nine yard line, first and goal. Tompkins in at, wide, at running back. They'll hand it up the middle. Keith Harris uh, will make the stop along with Robert Carter down to the seven yard line. It'd be second and goal from the seven. Thanks for that replay, guys. Great work to get that camera shot. As I'm pretty sure that's the rule, right? The illegal, it's illegal touching. Yeah, you can't run out of bounds and come back in. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, just with the personal foul, if that trumps the illegal touching. I don't think it but would. They didn't but throw a flag for illegal yeah, touching, though. They so. should. The hat came yeah. off, so he knew yeah. what he was throwing it for. Yeah. Not sure. But we got a bow or neck right here. Yes. Two receivers left, one to the right, tight left. They're going to fake it. Nope. Give it to Tompkins up the middle, inside the five, down to the three, down to the two, and Deontay Overstreet doing his best. Him and Amos Don doing their, their darndest to push him back to the two, and Mason Huntley comes up a little hurt right there as now Demetrius Lofton will come back in the game, and he's holding that shoulder a little bit, yeah. maybe a little stinger. Yeah, good old stinger it looks like as he's Hopefully it's not popped out of place, but you could pop that in and get back on the field, but that's not a fun feeling. 
All right, ball is just inside the three yard line. They're in a heavy package. They do have two receivers to the left, however. Well, I guess really not heavy. The wide receivers on the line. They're going to run the quarterback right side. Durham walks in touchdown Valdosta. Tarver had a chance at him at the one, but a good response back by, by, by the uh, Valdosta State Blazers. A good offense responds, and that's exactly what they did, Willie. An 11 play, 52 yard drive, four minutes and 17 seconds off the clock. Yeah, just a straight quarterback keep it out of the backfield. Nice job by Ivory out leveraging our D line, making a move and getting into the end zone for the Blazers. It's going to be a ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, don't go anywhere. Eston Thiel. We'll do the kicking for Valdosta. Give a long snapper the shout out. 6'7", 273 pounds. Kick is up. It looks good because it is good from Phil. Another timeout here on the field on UWG Productions. And kiss 102.7, 6.43 to go. First quarter, it's West Georgia 7, it's Valdosta 7. We'll be back for more right after this. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions, and we're going to show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups, and over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm going to send it to Shamaya in the operation room. Hey y'all, my name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. Here we have a in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm gonna throw the Kai in our TV booth. A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently, I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talkback boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GVM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now, I'm going to throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver, to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our NAT sound for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our camera's feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions' YouTube page. Bye! <laughs> 6.43 to go here in quarter number one. According to the scoreboard, is 0-0, but we know that it's 7-7. Seven seven. And look at the great crowd tonight in Carrollton. Yeah, great turnout for a big rivalry for both schools tonight. I'm telling you what, the square will be bumping tonight <laughs> after this game. Cade, we'll go down to you. What you got for us? Two high-powered, high-tempo offenses, Willie. You can talk a little bit about it. Coach Dean was telling me before the game that he was going to use off-tempo offense, and I think that's what happened in that first offensive drive. The, the Valdosta State defense just couldn't catch up with what the West Georgia offense was doing. They're going to kick it to Ronnie Blackman. He'll take it at the one. Blackman outside, 20. Blackman, 25. And it closed quickly. Good open field tackle by Valdosta. Victor Talley. And ladies and gentlemen, we have another offsides on the kickoff. Two for two for both teams now. They just wanted to, <laughs> what you could do, I could do better. So Valdosta is going to be called for offsides on the kickoff. And man, I have never seen that twice in a game. Hardly yeah. once, but never <laughs> twice. Offsides. Kicking team. Five yard penalty will be added to the first down. Well, you know that they say, um, you know they talk a lot about point of emphasis and officials. That may be one of the point of emphasis this year for officials. Good return by Ronnie Blackman, and we'll set up shop at the 34-yard line. Two receivers to the left. 
One to the right, we go tight right. That looks like Ian Hinkle. Jackson Carson, the running back. We're sending Hinkle in motion, flipping sides to the left. We'll fake it, throw it out here to Hinkle, and he dropped it, caught it, and then it gets picked up and thrown back, and ooh, a late, nasty hit. Uh, a lot of different guys out there. Number 32 on the stop, Jordan Phillips, the red shirt freshman defensive back, and then he was finished off by number 56, Torin Calhoun. Yeah, they had three for three matched out out there. It looks like they had us outnumbered. Tough play on first down. Forces a second and long for the Wolves. And they jump. Gonna be a free play for West Georgia. Frost looking, and it's out of bounds, intended for Peterson, and I am shocked that they let that play go because our center, David Bodden, was knocked back when he snapped the football. Yeah, he took a pretty good hit. Free play for the Wolves. Try to get as much yardage as they can for free. See what the white hat calls. Offside, defense, number 54. Five yard penalty, second down. Roderick Evans is our official today. And one thing to note, uh, Willie, as we talked about, we mentioned in the pregame, Michael Gaden and one of their defensive tackles is out. So that definitely hurts the depth piece because once again, you can only bring what, 60 players to 65 players to road games? Absolutely, so. and a senior D lineman for the Blazers made a, made a freshman mistake, tough break for the senior. Five wide, Frost looking, complete to St. Britt across the middle at the 45, up to the 47 yard line, first down West Georgia. The freshman, or the sophomore from Oxford with another great uh, first down reception. Yeah, split out in the slot to the left side and good job of Harrison keeping his eyes up, just finding the simple little slant across the middle. First down for the Wolves. Going a lot of five wide, Willie. That's the third time we've been five wide today. I like it, spread them out find the holes in the defensive coverage. Of course, the quarterback likes it. Absolutely, <laughs> right? Gunslinging <laughs> offense like we have, great to find those holes. Too tight, Ian Hinkle, Mason Yost, three, uh, two receivers in, will give to Carson up the middle, get maybe three yards up to midfield, and a little extra, <laughs> uh, I'm not even gonna say but it, bear, just, just assume that there's extracurricular after every yeah. play. <laughs> Barrel roll right there by Ossel Donaldson for about five more, five yards after the. Oh, who's this down for us? Looks Seven. like 78 big old. Uh, That's Marvin James. Marvin, yeah. Marvin has kind of rotated in and out with Jalen Moore. They've been kind of the starters there at that left guard position. And Dr. Paul out there, one of our athletic trainers down at midfield, it's second and eight currently for the Wolves as Marvin James are trying to get them up right here on the logo. We've seen a lot of offense so far in this ball game. It's currently seven to seven with 5.16 left to go here in quarter number one. And let's go down with a little game update from Senor Cade Perry. If he's got anything. This big offensive lineman is uh, He's writhing in pain, guys, and it's definitely his left knee. Uh, Dr. Post out there looking at it now. It was almost immediate. Uh, look at the replay. I think there was a pretty low hit there on him. Kate, look, you're looking, looking good looking on at, television right now. I'm looking at our replay. Yes, you look sir. real look good, at the baby. <laughs> look at the tie and the button down. We have upgraded Cade Perrion, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Body by Cade. <laughs> Cade, what is your uh, work uh, weekly workout routine? Are you up at 6 a.m.? Uh, it's usually 5, 10. You know, I'll eat about 12 egg whites, you know, wash it down with a little oatmeal. Yeah, you know, Willie, it's, it's hard to, to build a temple like this. It, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> I would have to work pretty hard to look like that, I tell you that much. As they escort our good buddy Marvin James off the – off the field now, not putting much pressure on that left knee is we'll get him looked at. I'm assuming that Jalen Moore will come back in at left guard. It will be, I guess they moved the ball up a little. Well, they had to move the ball because Marvin James was laying right there. So we gained a yard, I believe, on the on the ball placement. We'll take it. We'll it take will be it. second and seven now. Ball at the 50 with 5.16 to go here in quarter number one. Some scores from around the league. West Florida up at half, 21 to 10. Don't go to sleep on Mississippi College, though. They're our second-half team. They sure are. And West Al leads North Greenville 14 to 12 in the third quarter. Two receivers right, one to the left. Frost looking, and we're looking for Zyrie Wilson and good defense by Valdosta. Maybe you could argue for P.I. there, but 
I kind of like the no call, even though it is our guy right there. It'll be third and seven. Yeah, a sail route right there by Zyrie Wilson from the slot. A sail route is about a 10 yard out route to the sideline, all about timing. Looks like the receiver had a little bit of a tug on, the, on our boy Zyrie, but tough break, third and long for the Wolves. Third and seven, ball at midfield for the Wolves. They'll go trips to the right, one to the left, Zyrie Wilson. Jackson Carson, the running back, will send Ronnie Blackman in motion with five seconds on the play clock, four seconds. Frost looking, looking, takes the snap, looking, throws across the middle, complete to Zyrie Wilson into the 40, up to the 38-yard line, 39-yard line is where they'll mark him. Another third down conversion for the Wolves. Yeah, similar play to what we saw in the first drive with the completion of Zyrie. Great eye control by Harrison Frost, looking right, coming back to his left hitting Zyrie across the middle for a first down. Nice pitch and catch for the Wolves. Wolves now three for three on third down in the ball game. First and 10 West Georgia uh, stacked to the left. We're tight, very, we're all inside the hashes. We'll fake it and Zyrie Wilson's hurt. Zyrie Wilson is hurt. We'll throw it to Ronnie Blackman across the 30 down to the 26 yard line. Willie, that was not a good side at all. We were gonna run a bootleg with Zyrie and we had to move, I think, to our second or third progression. Luckily, we hit Ronnie Blackman for another Wolves first down, down to the 26-yard line, but Zyrie Wilson came up limp right there. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Zyrie was coming across the formation on the flake from uh, fake from left to right side and looked like he might have collided with the D end of Valdosta State. Great job by Harrison Frost finding Ronnie third progression there, but tough break for Zyrie. Hope he's all right. Yeah, I'd like to, if we get one more chance I want to see another UWG Productions instant replay just to see because I thought it was non-contact Willie I think yeah, he's holding I he, thought he was holding his shin yeah. so that may, we'll have to see on yeah. the replay what what happened to Zyrie but tough break because he's been a staple the past couple of weeks for the at the X position for he was, the Wolves he was the go-to guy uh, for Harrison Frost last week as he comes, runs the bootleg, and he was already hobbling. Yeah, no yeah, he, no contact, just kind of right off the yeah. his in first initial move. Look Come, at that all-22 shot right there. That's pretty good right that's there. pretty doggone good out of our crew. That looked like, I'm not a doctor, but and we'll go to Cade. He, he's, he's waving at us. It's something on his left foot. They're they're playing with his toes, is or what they're what they're doing. I saw him grab his shin as well, and then he moved to his knee. But Dr. Poss and the trainer out here are, are paying very special attention to to his toes. Well, I hope it's not an Achilles. Yeah, Achilles or calf strain would be my two guests. Well, we're glad that he's getting up. This is a 316 healthcare injury timeout. We've had a couple of those. 316 Family Medicine here in Carrollton in Bremen. That's where my daughter goes. That's where I go. My daughter's one month old, by the way, today. Time, time flies, time's, right? Time's flying. Right. You getting any sleep? Yeah, I'm getting some sleep. What is sleep? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, we're, doing, we're doing pretty good. So West Georgia will have it first and 10, ball at the 26-yard line. So after the 316, Family medicine injury timeout. Tremaine, ja <laughs> Tremaine Jackson decides he wants to take a timeout. All right, they're gonna come to us on the booth cam. Look at this, Willie, we're on the booth cam. How about it? As we got a 7-7 ball game right now. Willie Candler, Matt Skinner with you guys tonight. Kay Perry down on our sidelines, and it's been a, a lot of fun, a lot of offense so far, and exactly what we expected, oh, to be we're, honest. We're, we're on the big screen out oh. on the stadium. Don't show, <laughs> don't scare anybody <laughs> out there, but yeah, just what you expected in a rivalry like this, big offense, yeah. and it's just gonna be a high scoring contest the whole yeah. game, and whoever scores the most points will prevail, right? <laughs> Is that how this game That's works? That's how it works, so we'll see what happens. So West Georgia will come out uh, after the big completion to Ronnie Blackman. They're at the 26-yard line. It, uh, it's been a, a good mixture of, of more so passing. I think we're about 75% pass right now. We are. We're, we're trying to take advantage of the holes that they've opened up in the secondary. But with Zyrie going down, we might have to get Jackson Carson involved here. Trips to the left. Tight right will give to Carson. Nice cut back. He's at the 20, 19, 18-yard line. Good run by Jackson Carson. They'll put it right at the 19, a gain of uh, just about six yards, almost seven, second and a long three. 
Yeah, good run on first down by Jackson. Hit the hole hard and had a cut back. Let it develop in front of him. Good job, the O-line of West Georgia, really creating a yeah. wall for him to make that cut back for a big gain on first down. We'll hand to Carson, left side, and Carson just slipped. He tripped over Harrison Frost's foot. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that he tripped over Harrison Frost's foot. That's tough. Now, that's something we work on every day at practice, just run game footwork, and so that doesn't happen. Tough break. They clicked heels, as you call it, Harrison yeah. Frost and Jackson, and unfortunate there because he had a hole in front of him. Oh, yep. yeah, and he had all the room. Parker Gibbs did a nice job on the seal block. So did David Bodden, and we have another 316 healthcare injury timeout. We'll try to see who that is. 316 Family Medicine from newborns to the golden years. Healthcare doesn't have to be complicated. From acute care to chronic disease management, the team at 316 Family Medicine are dedicated to making your healthcare experience a positive one. To learn more, visit 316FamilyMedicine.us. We see the national champion cheerleading squad down there on the sidelines. We've got a lot of daggum cheerleaders. We do. The all girl what, squad and the co-ed squad. What was the number that was turned out? Do you remember? Somebody told me it was like 70, I think it might have been 60 to 70 cheerleaders we have. So there's more cheerleaders than what the visiting team can bring. I think so. We have quite a cheerleading squad, uh, co-ed as well as female, uh, multiple national championships throughout the years. Great school to come for come to and be a cheerleader. Amon Williams was the defensive lineman that was shaking up. A big third down play right here. Third and about six at the 19 yard line. Got to get to the 13 uh, or got to get down to the um, was it the 16 yard line from our own 21 thereabouts. Frost looking pass complete to Steven Peterson inside the 15 to the 10 down to the five and they'll get marked down at the two yard line first and 10 goal or first and goal to go for West Georgia. Yeah, I can't say enough about Harrison Frost on this play. Valdosta brought the house, stood in the pocket, took a shot, found his high school teammate for a big first down and goal for the West Georgia Wolves. Great throw by Harrison Frost. Jordan Billups was holding on for dear life right there. And here it is, the heavy package, three tight ends. They call this, what, a 13 personnel? That's correct. We'll now go Wild Wolf, as we like to call it. Ball on the two-yard line, the Wild Wolf. Snap goes to Jackson Carson. He'll try to find a hole, and the 230-pounder from Phoenix City, Alabama, drives in for a West Georgia touchdown. Nice run right there by the senior, Jackson. Is he a senior? Yes, I'm, sir. I'm going to call him a senior. Yeah. Jackson yep. Carson lowered his head, punched it in the end zone. Great job right there by the West Georgia Wolves responding to West, or excuse me, Valdosta State's drive. Leads to seven points. We got a little bit of a sub issue, it looks like, on the... PAT team here, but great job right yeah. there by the West Georgia offense to respond. A 10 play, 66 yard drive for the Wolves in three minutes and 49 seconds. And more importantly, keeping that Valdosta State offense off the field. And I guarantee what happened is we had the injury to Marvin James and we just had to put it in there. Good snap by Skinner and he missed it left. Pellegrino hooked it left. Yeah, that's not going to make Coach Dean happy there. That's something you work on, ones and twos for the special teams. Don't want to rush and miss the kick there. That could come back to haunt us later in the game. So 13 to 7 on the miss PAT with 2.48 to go. We will keep, or we will keep it here. Had a little bit of a longer first, uh, first quarter due to the uh, injuries, the 316 Family Medicine injury timeouts. 316 Healthcare. Well, I've got nowhere to go. I know Cade's going to be hanging out with me later on the square. So <laughs> looking forward to it, Cade. So Pellegrino will kick it off from our own 35. Uh, back deep for them will be Seth McGill, the 5'10, 193 pound senior. Thankfully, he's finally a senior. He's been a fun player to watch out of Miami Gardens High School. He's a good one for them. Was he on the team back when y'all played him in 2018? Trying to remember. You know, I don't. I, 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 don't, I don't think, think he so. was. No, I don't think so. We know Ivory Durham was. We know Ivory was and Seth. Those are yeah. about the two yeah. names I could give you. Unfortunately, Ivory kind of haunts me in my sleep <laughs> at night sometimes <laughs> with the last-second touchdown before halftime for the GSC Championship. Yeah. At Valdosta State, what a game that was under the lights. We'll never forget that game. Down at Old Baysmore Hyder Stadium. 
End over end kick, kind of short down up to the 15. McGill will take it from there. McGill up to the 25, and this time we do a better job of covering. Nice work by Devontae Matthews. Also in on the stop, is that 47 for us? I think it is Marcus Gary, the 5'10", 203-pounder. How about it from Valdosta, Georgia, Lowndes High School? Yeah, Marcus has been on the team for a long time. He played with me, and great tackle by Marcus there. What a great night for football, Matt. The skyline, we got the sun setting. Valdosta State's brought their band. Great night for football here at Rayland yes, Field. Indeed. Yes, indeed, and somebody has their shoulder pads off down there, Cade. I think that was our D end who came off with the is shoulder. It? Yeah, Cade's sitting here talking. Cade is talking to Kerry. I think that's Mason Huntley coming off right now. We got a lot so, of injury reports to catch yeah, up on. Durham makes the complete or pass out here, and Devonte Matthews slings him down to the ground, complete the Trayvon Roberts, and nice defense by Devonte Matthews. The sophomore from Central High School. Kate, is that Mason Huntley right there, unfortunately? Yeah, it is, and he's in big time pain. I can't really tell what he's favoring, though. He already has that big cast on his left hand. Right. It's, that's, Ooh, he's like leaning it's... to the right, but I, I can't really tell. Second and eight, they'll give it to Tompkins and Powell. Jalen Tarver, the sophomore from AC Flora High School, comes up and meets Mr. Tompkins in the hole. He got three yards, and it will be third and five. Yeah, the good fill right there, as we call it, from the linebacker position, just stepping up and taking that hit head on, delivered a good blow to their running back, third and short for the Blazers. Jalen Tarver has been playing excellent football for the Wolves. We bring an extra defensive back that looks like Jeremy Smith in the ballgame, and we bring in Traylon Shepard. We basically have six DBs in on the field, maybe seven if you want to count De Deontay Overstreet playing linebacker. Durham looking to pass. Got a man wide open, caught it at the 50. Good catch, 40, 35, 30. Jet Lee can't get him. J uh, Traylon, or Jalen Shepard's going to save a touchdown. Down inside the five, ball's going to be at the four yard line, Jalen Shepard saves a touchdown, but a great catch by Victor Talley and a first down Valdosta. Yeah, that was a great play by Valdosta. They had a three man bunch set split out to the right. They brought the running back in motion from the backfield to the right side, faked a screen pass, and one of those receivers just slipped out behind our coverage for a big game for Valdosta. Trying to get set up. They'll give it to McGill left side, and we, and we get seven Wolves on the football led by Amos Don, the middle linebacker. Marzavian Dix in there as well. Be second down, a loss of one to the five yard line. Again, this is gonna be a big offensive game. Just trading blows back and forth between two high powered offenses. We'll see who could prevail. That completion was for 61 yards. Big play is in their name and that was Coach Dean's keys to this game. Gotta limit the explosive plays. Gotta keep everything in front of you as a defense. So ball is back in between the four and the five yard line. They'll go two receivers to the left. Well, three if you want to count Tally, who's on the line of scrimmage. They'll hand it to McGill up the middle and he's going to lose another yard. The Wolves defense swarms to the football. Jeremy Smith, Shaheen O'Neal, and Demetrius Lofton throw McGill back near the 20 yard line. Ford Progress will stop it at the five. We got lucky that we didn't get a little extracurricular activity right there. Yeah, we got a little bit of an extra love tap, to, so to speak, by Sha Shaheen O'Neal there. Explo explosive first quarter there, Matt. A lot happening, a lot of injuries, a lot of big plays already. Setting up for a fun three more quarters Guys, of this game. Y'all don't want to go anywhere. It's 13 <laughs> to 7 here on UWG Productions to Kiss 1 of 2.7. The Wolves lead the Blazers and a big third and goal coming up next when we come back. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me, appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. 
I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Verida is a national non-emergency medical transportation management company headquartered in Villa Rica, managing the transportation of Medicaid members to their medical appointments. With a keen focus on care, Verida uses best-in-class call centers, business operations, and technology services to meet the needs of members. Verida is partnering with the University of West Georgia to offer call center training, career development, and leadership development tracks that allow employees to advance in their careers. Our program is open to the West Georgia community. Verida is a proud supporter and sponsor of of UWG Athletics. Go Wolves! With over 25 years real estate experience, we dedicate ourselves to doing business the right way all the time. Hi, I'm Tony Tritt, co-owner of Tritt Realty, a premier real estate brokerage serving Georgia and Alabama. Whether you're a first-time buyer, a seasoned investor or builder, or maybe you're relocating to our area to embark on a new opportunity, we want to lock arms and guide you seamlessly through the entire real estate process from start to finish. We want to become your lifetime real estate partner. Find us online at trittrealty.com or come on by our office in downtown Carrollton and get started today. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin. How's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Back here, Raylan Field, University Stadium. Wolves lead the Blazers 13 to seven to start the second quarter. Big third and goal from the five for Valdosta. They send two receivers to each side. Seth McGill as the running back. Takes the snap, Durham gonna run the quarterback draw up the middle, he does a spin move, he's trying to get outside. He's running backwards to the 10 and we push him out of bounds. Jalen Tarver, fourth down. What nice. a play by the Wolves. Nice pirouette there in the backfield by Ivory. Saw nowhere to run, direct snap, quarterback run. Nowhere to go, tries to go left, does a, does a circle spin move, runs right. Good containment right there by the West Georgia defense. I tell you what, Shaheen O'Neal is playing his eyes out right now. That's what you want to see from a senior like Shaheen. This game means a lot to him. He set the edge right there, and Eston Thiel will kick it. This will be a, what, 26-yarder? Yeah, 26-yarder for Eston Thiel. Snap up. Jet Lee almost blocked it, and I think he got it in the left upright. He did. Kick is good by Eston Thiel, a 26-yard field goal, and immediate timeout. We will take. When we come back, we will go over first quarter statistics and more. It's UWG Productions and Kiss 102.7. I was a resident assistant in college, and then that parlayed into becoming a hypnotist full time. Uh, I can touch the face of someone a little hypnotized. You are a person, this is the face of someone like WTF. Okay, this is going to be an OG of that. Who knows this person? I assume we all do. I love people's reactions, I love meeting people. I want people to be skeptical, because when they're skeptical, then their jaw drops. Smile. <laughs> There were some zombies, uh, people hid people under chairs, there were superheroes. I just met two students tonight who showed me photos that we took time after time me come to campus, so I'm very grateful that they come. I encourage you to be skeptical people, but we as a people, we as a country, Change your opinion with more information. That's all I want. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice. 
for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Back here, Raylan Field in University Stadium as the Blazers kick a 26-yard field goal and their drive goes seven plays, 61 yards. We'll, we'll take them kicking field goals if yeah. we keep scoring touchdowns, absolutely. So 13 to 10, your score. Man, this Valdosta State offense, it's fun to watch. I mean, I, I'm glad that, you know, we got the lead right now, but it's fun to watch. It is. Big play offense. Valdosta has a great weapons in their quarterback, running back, and receivers, and it's going to be a great night of football. So Phil will kick it off. Ronnie Blackman back deep. LaPerion Perry as well. Phil end over end kick will send it back to Ronnie Blackman, the senior from Westlake High School. He'll take it a yard deep in the end zone, run it out to the right, make a man miss, cut it back to the 10, up to the 15 yard line. We got a flag on the play and Ronnie Blackman gets it up to the, they're gonna mark it at the 14 yard line. Tackle made by number 21, Philip Starks. And the flag is at the 10 yard line. They're saying it's against Val Austin. Kate Perry is letting us know it's play. against Mount Austin. They've got There's two flags. Oh, they, oh I, I, they oh, might have been offsides. Be, they're going to be offsides again. <laughs> For the third time tonight, we're going to have a <sighs> kicking offsides. How about we just do it all over again? They're probably going to offset. Let's see what the call is. Offside. Kicking team. Legal block in the back. Return team. Those penalties offset. Re kick. Hey, Willie. That's the most offsides I've ever seen. Three in one game. In a kicking on, yeah, on the special kickoff. teams. I've never seen that. And we're going to catch a break with it being offsides because the flag was at the 10, so that means we would have started on the five-yard line. Yeah, good break there for the Wolves. We'll take it. Reload. First and 10. Well, it's not first and 10 yet. We've got to re-kick it. Eston Thiel will re-kick it. And we'll hopefully get to see Ronnie Blackman get another good return. Well, that, that last return only got up to, what, the 18-yard line, I think? So, yeah. Eston Thiel does a really good, good job. He kicks it far, but the hang time He's he got has. great height on the initial kick, and it allows the coverage team to get down the field. And, heck, he put it almost in the AOB on his PAT. He's got a big leg. Yes. So we'll do this all over again between the injury timeouts and the offsides on the on the kickoffs. We've had quite the night. Another booming kick this time to LaPerion Perry. And he, I hope, will just take a knee about six, seven yards back. He will indeed take a knee. And the Wolves will set up shop first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Kate, what do you got for us down there on the sideline? If you look down here at me, I'm down here in the far end zone by the AOB. This group of gentlemen right here is the 1982 National Championship team. They're getting inducted into the Hall of Fame today as a team. Look at all of them. They came back. You know, what a special team. They won the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl 14-0 against Augustana. But the other thing is, and the more remarkable thing is, they still hold the record for points per game, scoring offense, and scoring defense in the University of West Georgia football record books all the way from 1982. Thank you, Kay, for that. Looking forward to watching the ceremony at halftime. We go with a tight end and give it to Darius Clark, his first carry up to the 30. And, oh, man, I'm going to be honest, if number 92 right there and Antar Thompson doesn't make the stop, uh, it could have been a house call for Darius Clark. He got five yards. It looks like we got another 316 family medicine injury timeout. 316 Family medicine from newborns to the golden years. Healthcare doesn't have to be complicated. From acute care to chronic disease management, the team at 316 Family Medicine are dedicated to making your healthcare experience a positive one. To learn more, visit 316FamilyMedicine.us. And luckily, Mr. Thompson is going to walk off under his own power. Yeah, I could tell you Bryce Carlson, the O-line coach for West Georgia, was not happy right there with his O-line. Looked like... I don't know who it was, but missed a block. On the we, back side. On the back side, yeah. yeah. We had a great lane for our running back to run if we could have gotten past 92, but he got his ear pretty good. Pretty well, as my mother would say, Matt. Yeah, you better. Proper gra you better, grammar. You better fix your grammar there, Willie. Trips to the right, one to the left. 
We'll go tight left, Mason Yost. And we're gonna fake it, roll out. We got Bridges open. He'll make the catch at the 35 up to the 40, 45. We got a flag. Could be legal man downfield. We'll see. What do you want, Willie? What do you see? I, I mean, I was watching the O-line. I don't know how, I didn't look like we were too far down the field. I think we just got some flag happy refs here. Let's see what the white hat has to say. An eligible receiver downfield, offense, number five. Five yard penalty, first down. He was covered up. They said LaPerion Perry was covered up. And look at the coach, the head coach talking junk to Harrison Frost. Yeah, we they got. Had to, they had to push him back. Let's see the instant replay on our UWG Productions right here. To get it to Bridges and so the white hat said he had him covered so that must have meant that one of the receivers outside did not get off or identify gotcha. himself pre-snap is what gotcha. the call is so that negates say about a 15 yard pass play we'll have it second and 11 we'll throw it out of the backfield to Darius Clark he'll get up near the 30 they'll mark him out short at the 29 a gain of about six, it'll be third and manageable for the Wolves at the 29 yard line, third and about six. Yeah, nice swing route out of the backfield there on second down and long just to get us in the positive yards, getting us to a manageable third down here for West Georgia's offense. Roderick Evans, the official, and Harrison, Harrison Frost still pleading his case with the uh, with the white hat, but that plays behind us. We got to pick up a third down, which West Georgia has been very good on third downs, third and six. Two receivers each side. Frost looking, steps up, complete to LaPerion Perry at the 42. He gets slung forward to the 46-yard line. Another third down completion from Harrison Frost to LaPerion Perry. Yeah, great job by LaPerion Perry. Option route, found the gap in the defense and just chopped his feet, sat in the zone, and de Harrison delivered a bullet to LP for a first down. Nice play. That is now five for five on third down. That's a good percentage right there. Yeah, that would be 100. Tight, tight look. Double stack receivers. Fake it to Frost. Or Frost fakes it to Clark. We'll throw it out here to LP across midfield to the 46-yard line. Nice pitch and catch. Another bootleg. We've, thrown, we've seen a lot of bootlegs here in the first half. 12-34 on a second quarter clock. Wolves lead 13 to 10, and they have a second and three now. We have, and a bootleg. It's tough to defend. It gets the defense moving from side to side. It's also a great uh, great play for the offense because it gets Harrison Frost out of the pocket, gets him into some comfortable throws out in the flats, and just I love the bootleg back when I got to play. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Bring Trey Williams in motion, who has a touchdown tonight. We'll run that rocket sweep out to the right across the 45 to the 43, up to the, near the 40 yard line. They're going to mark it at the 41. Another first down for Darius Clark and the Wolves. Yeah, nice run by Darius Clark catching the pitch and just getting north for the West Georgia Wolves offense, getting the first down. Looks like we're giving Jackson a little bit of a blow, but I like Jack uh, Darius coming in a little bit quicker in the initial catch and run with his first step. And, Nice run for the Wolves. Clark in there still at running back. Two receivers to each side spread out. We'll run it to Clark up the middle. 40, 35, 30 yard line. First and 10 again. West Georgia 11 yards and a first down. Yeah, Darius shot through the hole again. Quick feet. Taps his helmet. He wants to come out. He needs a blow, but we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to keep him in there. But great run by Darius on first down to get another first down for the Wolves. Have we seen Zyrie Wilson? We'll go down to Kate here in a second. Maybe he has an update on Zyrie Wilson, number 15 from wide receiver for the Wolves. We'll see if we can hopefully uh, get a stat. It looks like he's, it looks on, like the he's sitting on the bench there. over here. Hope he's okay. We'll give to Clark again. 30, 25, 20. There is Clark inside the 15-yard line. We are pounding the rock, and Bryce Carlson says, get up on the line. We're running it again. First down, West Georgia. I tell you what, we're going to need to bring some oxygen to Darius once he gets back to the <laughs> sideline. Again, great run. Outside zone run play to the right side. Takes the handoff, gets north. Great job by our O-line with some big holes. Big push up front for a Wolves first down. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, tight right with uh, Ian Hinkle. He'll now motion to the left. We'll hand it to Clark, left side. He'll cut it back up 20 or uh, to the 13 yard line. Not gonna lie, he looked a little tired. Yeah, we're, 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 we're taking him out now. He, he, need, he needs a blow. I'm sure he's winded. <laughs> Get that man some oxygen and some H2O. Cade, what you got for us down there? <laughs> 
update on Zyri Wilson. Zyri is dealing with a toe issue, talking to Dr. Potts. They're going to evaluate it at halftime, but it's not looking good, so he's probably not going to come back. Yeah. I wonder if we call that turf toe. Or yeah. Turf toe is not fun to play with. Yeah. Two receivers to the right, one left. We are tight right with 10 minutes on the second quarter clock. Wolves lead 13 to 10. We'll run Carson left side, 15, 10, runs over a man at the seven and bows away to the four. That's a grown man running the football. Jackson Carson, first and goal for the Wolves. Yeah, that's where playing safety would not be fun when you got to step up and fill the gap on the run. Oh. And Jackson with a big blow, big body blow to their safety. Brings up third and short. All right, I thought they were going to give him the first down. That spot right there had the first down. The guy up top did not. Just runs over their backside safety. Ouch. So, so they're marking the ball at the five, but he fell across the four on our UWG Productions instant replay. We're going to go Wildcat. Wild Wolf, third and one. Give it up the middle to Carson. He's at the two. Carson will get thrown down near the two, maybe the one. First and goal, West Georgia. Heck, I'd run it. I'd line up and run it again. That's hard to stop. That's what Harrison's like. We need to run that play again. Just Jackson Carson came into the ball game seventh in the country in rushing touchdowns with 11. He's got 12 and he's eyeing number 13. We go two receivers to the left, Marquise Bridges and LaPerion Perry. T. Cole in the ball game up top. Ian Hinkle at tight end. First and goal, ball at the three. We bring T. Cole in motion. Back to the left. We'll hand it to Carson. Stutter steps across the two to the one yard line. 8.42 on a second quarter clock. Clock continuing to run. We are in no hurry and we're not subbing right now. Now we'll sub. Here comes the heavy package. The old 13 personnel. There was not a lot of 13 personnel when you were running offense, were you? No, not <laughs> a lot of 13 personnel. But, you know, we do that to spread it out because I could run a little bit more too, so. Oh, you could? Yeah, just, just a little bit quicker than Harrison. <laughs> not to knock Harrison, but. 8-13 eight, eight to go. Snap to Carson. Up the middle. Touchdown, West Georgia. What an answer. Wolves on a huge drive. Jackson Carson on a 12 play, 75 yard touchdown drive, 6 16. Ran six minutes off the clock, even more important right there. Yeah. Keeping that high powered offense off the field. It's 19 to 10. West Georgia leads. Yeah, three drives and three scores for the West Georgia Wolves offense. That's what you want. Great job by the Wolves taking a long drive there and getting six points for the Wolves. Pellegrino will attempt the extra point. Skinner to snap it. Hogan to hold it. Good snap. Good hold. Kick from Pellegrino is up. It looks good because it is good. Timeout on the field. And here comes the great 1982 National Championship team. We'll talk about them in just a second. 8.07 to go. Second quarter. Wolves with a 20-10 lead on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans.
And here we go, Wolves with a 20-10 lead over the Valdosta State Blazers. Another great drive, and at the timeout, I don't know if you guys uh, knew this or not, but it's Hall of Fame Saturday along with Friends and Family Saturday, and they just honored the 1982 National Championship team. That was incredible. The 82 National Championship team just like capped up every single one of the players and got this crowd into it. Really man. cool moment, absolutely. I love how we're not even running down now. We're, we're literally waiting as Pellegrino is going to have a touchback. A touchback for Brock Pellegrino. But did you see what we did? We completely changed our kickoff team right there, and everybody just stacked up at the 33-yard line, and nobody moved until the ball was kicked. That's one way to eliminate the offsides <laughs> in the special teams game. But again, what a cool moment with the Hall of Fame team. They interacted with the sideline during the break, hyping each other up. Really cool moment to see there, and hopefully it'll give the, the Wolves some energy to finish this game strong. West Florida leads Mississippi College. 24 to 10, North Greenville up 15 to 14 on West Alabama. And thankfully, it seems like it's been a minute since we've seen Ivory Durham and company. That's the most important thing here tonight. That's right. You know you're doing well if you're keeping those Valdosta State weapons off the field like West Georgia's offense is doing. So they changing the I guess you get to pick what hash you wanted on right that's after, right after yeah, the so break yep that Austin wanted it on the right hash so it is moved to the right hash Durham takes the snap hands to Seth McGill the counter play up to the 30 31 32 yard line seven yard gain second and three now as it looked like Xavier Robinson and Amos Dawn and Keandre Williams in on the stop yeah that's a tough play to defend they've got two pullers from the left side left guard and left tackle are both pulling to the right side like a counter play for the running back. Big boys to run behind. Yes. We go with our normal 4-2-5 look. They go with an extra tight left. Durham's going to run it to the left, and we got nobody over there. 35. Now he's running backwards. Thank you. For, he ran backwards. Yeah, he had Jet, us, he had us out leverage to start, and yeah. if he just knifed early after he got around the DN, he would have picked up a first down easily but wanted to bounce, and great job by the pursuit just to keep yeah. him outside. Jet Lee made the stop and he's holding his hand as he comes off. We have a lot of injuries. Jet Lee, after making the stop, comes to the sideline and yeah, it looks like he had, if he hits the seam, Ivory Durham is still running. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah, easy first down <laughs> if he would have gotten north there quickly, but fortunate break for West Georgia. Durham, third and four, looking long throw and a great catch by this near side receiver, BK Smith. That's good enough for a first down. You know, that was only good for about six yards, but he probably threw that ball 25, 26 yards. Yeah, that's a long throw from the opposite hash and good pitch and catch for the Blazers to get a first down there. Kadarius Satterwhite comes out of the ball game now. We go back to our normal look in there on defense. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They'll run that counter again with McGill, and we do a good job hitting them right near the line of scrimmage. Keith Harris in there on the stop. Xavier Robinson also on the stop. And big number 92, Allen Johnson. Haven't called his name tonight. He makes a good stop right there as well. Yeah, just a great front four by the West Georgia Wolves defensive line, a lot of seniors, guys who've been here throughout the process and the building phases through freshman to senior year. This game means a lot to them as a senior. Yeah. Got a yard, second and nine, ball at their own 42 yard line. Two receivers left, one right, tight end left. Tompkins the running back, Durham looking, looking, gonna throw a deep ball, got a man open, caught, and he will waltz into the end zone, touchdown. Valdosta State, man, they hit quick, don't they? A 58-yard reception and touchdown for Valdosta. Receiver is Ted Hurst, just a freshman wideout. Yeah, so that's cover four by the West Georgia Wolves. So your two receivers to the left side, the one in the slot is going to run to the safety and break out to suck his eyes inward. And then you've got the outside receiver by the Blazers running a post, deep post, has the hole middle of the field to throw open as we call it as a quarterback nice throw by ivory for a big play for the blazers getting a touchdown Eston field to tack on the extra point 20 to 16 now 550 to go and watch out folks in the aob nice catch whoever made that catch we do have a flag they're gonna get a false start yeah it looked like there was some movement before the snap 
false start. Offense, number 64. Five yard penalty, one on time down. So they will get a false start. 550 on a second quarter clock. Val Alsta answers five plays and 75 yards. It's gonna be an offensive battle throughout the course of this game. Big two high powered offenses going at it head to head. So they will kick it now and it will be a 25 yard extra point instead of the normal 20 yard extra point. Good snap, hold down and kick is up and he still almost hit, almost hit our flag twirler down there. Yeah, almost Luckily, hit the good. Alex Arma sign. Congratulations to Alex Arma. Yeah. Inducted into the Hall of Fame last night. Great teammate, great player in the history of West Georgia. And he's with the Commanders now, I believe? Yeah, he has bounced around. He was uh, signed out of uh, the free agent list to the Carolina, I think he was actually drafted, actually, yeah. to the Carolina Panthers. Then and he, he was on the, the Saints. Saints. And uh, I want to say he's still with the Commanders, but unsure. But he's a do-it-right kind of guy. Yeah. Fortunate to have played with him for a couple years here. So 5.50 left to go for West Georgia's offense here in the second quarter is, is that a Chucky doll? A Chucky doll. Do we know what the Chucky doll is for? Is that like a turnover well, chain It or is something? October. It is almost close to Halloween. I kind of frightens me, but hey, whatever, whatever it takes to win this I, game, right? I despise Chucky. <laughs> Kate's trying to pet Chucky down there. <laughs> Kate, Kate, are you wearing your Halloween costume, or you got some, you got something planned for uh, next week? Uh, he's, he's, he's looking he, at the Chucky no, doll. He, 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 he don't want to talk to me. He's trying to get more information about said Chucky doll. We'll have to bring it back to Kate here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Looks like Rajes Mosley now has the Chucky doll in hand, who is out for the season. And we'll come to K down after this uh, kickoff. Eston Thiel will kick it off. Uh, end over end kick will go to LaPerion Perry. Ball at the four. Perry up to the 15. Perry makes a man miss and gets knocked back. Just kind of stutter steps his way up to the 17-yard line. Let's go down and talk about the Chucky doll with Cade. Well, here I am sitting with Chucky the doll. <laughs> as, as they say, it's, it's, it's child's play, right? Chucky's here to bring the boys some good luck. But you know what, Willie? The doll's name isn't Chucky. It's actually William Candler the 15th or whatever <laughs> number it is in your family. So, Willie, it's your firstborn. Isn't he a cute little guy? <laughs> Look at Roger S. Mosley. <laughs> I've got no response to you, Cade, for that one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Great work by the UWG Productions team there. And hopefully Chucky can get us another touchdown. We go empty again. Now Carson's going to come back and sit beside Harrison Frost. They'll hand it to him left side. Carson going to get thrown back after a gain of maybe one. That is a giant human being. Number 92, Antar Thompson. If he's 287, then I'm 387 pounds. Yeah, that's a big number 92 for the Blazers there. Makes a nice play on Carson. Yeah, he did. Gain of one up to the 18-yard line. That's just one where you're that size, you just take on that block and don't give any ground and just hold your ground and make the play. Larry nice Brooks, play. a redshirt freshman, made the stop as well. We'll throw across the middle to Marquise Bridges, complete, and a West Georgia first down up to the 29-yard line. Frost to Marquise Bridges, first down West Georgia. Yeah, quick hitter. What Harrison sees pre-snap is off in the slot. The receiver's got inside leverage, so he knows right away that he's going to win quick pitch and catch right as he catches it throws it out there good first down for the wolves we'll go trips right one left jackson carson now beside harrison frost first and ten we'll fake it out throw it out to tay huff huff will gotta get up field spins off a wimpy tackler and scoots up to the 32 yard line again a three uh 439 to go second quarter wolves driving and now second and seven we'll come in with another tight end tay huff out the sophomore from Elberton with his first catch tonight. That's just an extension of the running game. It is. Again, it's just getting the ball outside, making the defense have to pursue out, out toward their sideline. and we'll give, give it to Carson up the middle at the 40. Carson 45, 50. Jackson Carson, good blocking by Marquise Bridges down the field. 40 down to the 35-yard line. Yeah, big play, big run by Jackson Carson there. Hits the hole hard, finds the opening. 
Big play for the West Georgia offense there. Great blocking by the O-line. And great downfield block here on the UWG Productions replay. Watch number seven, Marquise Bridges, if you can. Look, and nice pancake by our center. and Makes and a safety miss. and Here it is right here. Boom. Boy, you, got yeah. it, you got it a little late there. Pancake by Marquise Bridges. Here comes Hinkle in motion. We'll give it right back to Carson. Right side stretch play, 30, 25 flag on the play to the 20 yard line, but this is coming back, I'm afraid. I love how patient Jackson is when he gets the ball in his hands. He lets those blocks develop in front of him and then hits it hard. That's a senior running back, knows what he's doing. Hold it, offense, number 71. 10 yard penalty, first down. So it'll be now first and 20 for the Wolves. We'll have it on our own, what, 45 now. Yeah, they got Raymond Lewis, the senior, number 71, 6'3", 330 senior for us on the right side there. Unfortunate, breaks us back to about first and 20 for the Wolves. Well, we're having a little success running the football. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the MO of Valdosta State's defense is they will allow a lot of rushing yards as Mississippi Col College showed us last week. and. The Wolves offense is taking clear advantage of that tonight. So first and 20, we'll throw it out to Marquise Bridges. Another flag on the play, and I think we're gonna have illegal man downfield again. We got, an, we got about nine yards on the play, but Harrison Frost is, uh, it looks like we're gonna go back in reverse again. Seeing false start. Let's see. Illegal formation. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. And Coach Dean is, yeah, Coach Dean is not very happy. Yeah, oh. he's given that sideline official a piece of his <laughs> mind. I mean, I, I haven't seen anything from the booth that would call that an illegal formation. He's called it twice now versus us. So. It might be that they're at Valdosta's coach is in the ear of that sideline official because he's the one throwing these flags, but I'm not sure what they're seeing out there. Brings up first and about third, yeah, 25. Yeah, yeah first Wolves. and 25 for West Georgia at midfield. We'll throw it out complete to LaPerion Perry. Got a big chunk of it back. We got about, yeah, we got back to the almost the original line of scrimmage. We got 15 yards there. Yeah, nice pitch and catch from Harrison Frost to LP. That's all a timing route. One-on-one -on -one single receiver to the backside. Harrison Frost hits that third step, balls out right on time to LP for a big play, about 15 yards there on first down. Gets us to second and 11. Yeah, second and 11. Not bad, a 14-yard completion on first and 25. We'll throw it out here to Darius Clark. Clark to the 35. Darius Clark near the 30-yard line. He's slung out of bounds by a big 91. That's Brian Rattery. I tell you what, for 300 pounds, <laughs> oh my Brian, gosh. Brian was moving pretty quick side to side there. Nice play by big number one, 91 for the Blazers to get outside and make the play for a third and about six, we'll call it, for the Wolves. Yeah, he ran sideline to sideline. <laughs> yeah, that's a big, just, oh my that's goodness. That's a big boy, 300 chasing <laughs> how, yeah. how much does Darius, Darius weigh? 190? Yeah, yeah, 185 <laughs> on a good day. 208 to go here, second quarter, third down. Trips to the right, one to the left. They'll bring an extra man. We pick it up. Frost going to left. Perry on Perry. Oh, and it's went through his hands. Well, Perry on Perry had a chance to bring down a touchdown. Credit the corner running stride for stride with him, number 34, Darian Young, but I think LP just had it in the bread basket, couldn't catch it. Yeah, LP is gonna want that back again. One-on-one -on -one coverage, single receiver to, to the Wolves sideline. Great pickup by the offensive line. Yeah, too. Beat, oh. yeah, beat him on the go ball. Great throw by Harrison Frost and just threw the hands of LP. Unfortunate, because he had a touchdown there for the Wolves. Four down territory for West Georgia. Not want to punt, can't really kick a field goal. So trips to the right, one to the left. They'll bring a safety blitz. We got a man open, Bridges, and tipped. Almost intercepted and a little underthrown. Bridges didn't get it to him and a good play by Valdosta State. And they'll take over first and 10 at the 31 yard line. Yeah, tough. just a little, a little higher right there. Yeah, it was a corner out there by Bridges, and the safety or the corner did a great job of just undercutting that throw. Yeah. A little bit underthrown, tough, tough play, tough throw, but good play by Vadasa defense. And man, if you're LP, we just we got to make those plays. You yeah. know, we got to catch it. You don't get a lot of opportunities, and when you have the opportunity, you've got to capitalize. Tough yeah. break for the Wolves there. 
Well, West Georgia's got to find a way to get a stop here. Valdosta gets the ball to start the second half, and we know how high power their offense is, man. Yeah, just got to keep it in front of us as a defense. We don't want to allow any score here before halftime, so just keep everything in front. Trips to the left, one to the right for Valdosta State. They'll hand to McGill left side. He'll try to run it out. Gets up to the 33-yard line and a nice stop by Deontay Overstreet. He ran a long way to make that stop. Yeah, good job by the Wolves staying home there and forcing him side to side and not allowing him to get north. Good pursuit. Brings up second and six for the Wolves defense. Yeah, the junior from Tiff County High School makes the stop. 145 on the second quarter clock. We now have, looks like, yeah, still six DBs on the field. There were five DBs in on the field. Durham to pass, looking for the deep ball. Got BK Dobbins and Devontae Matthews almost came up with an interception and good defense by Devontae Matthews. Yeah, nice job by Devontae getting his eyes and finding the football in the air. Almost makes a big interception for the Wolves, but nice play finding the ball. They had a man kind of open, BK Smith. If it was thrown a little bit further, it uh, could have been trouble, but good job to track it by Devontae Matthews. And he, yeah, he tracked it perfectly. Yeah, that's a, just a good, good job of identifying the throw and finding the ball in the air, making a play. Big play there for the Wolves defense. Third and six, ball on their own 35 yard line. Wolves would love their first three and out of the game. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? It sure would. Extra DB in on the field. Durham gonna roll out. Festus Davies can't get him. He will be, sh I think, short of the first down at the 39 yard line. He had to get to the 40. This will depend on the spot. They had to drop the chain. Yeah, I think you've got to punt it here if you're a Blazer. He's, Ooh, he's two yards yeah, short. Back yeah, back on their own 40 yard line. They're keeping the offense on the field here. This could be a tough, a big, a big moment in this game if West Georgia can stop them. Credit Festus Davies right there, and Valdosta State's good looking to go for it. 1.30 to go on a second quarter clock. He ran out of bounds. It's fourth and two. They got to get to the 41 yard line. Let's see if the defense can make a play. Looks like they're going for it, Willie. Three receivers right, one to the left. Durham takes the snap. He's going to keep it. He's stopped in the back of Keandre Williams. Makes the stop three yards behind the line of scrimmage because everything is better and better. Big play by the West Georgia defense, staying home on the read option. Quarterback keeper tried to run outside, but we were there to make the play, giving the Wolves offense the ball on their own side, or Valdosta's own side of the field. Big play right there by the defense. You had to know the read option was coming. Great work by Nate Masters and the defensive staff next door as they make the stop. Keandre Williams rattles the cage a little bit of Al Austin. Let's see if the offense can take back over. Three timeouts, yeah, I'd plenty look, of time to work. Heck, look for a shot right here by Coach Dean, just knowing how aggressive he likes to play after a big, big turn of events there. Let's see if we take a shot at the end zone. Two receivers left, two to the right. We will hand to Jackson Carson, right side, up the middle now to the 30 yard line, a gain of seven. Well, when you're running the ball as good as we are, <laughs> that's why Coach Dean's calling the plays and I'm not. But good run on first down, picks up that, about you, six. You're just the quarterback. That's you right, wanna, yeah. you I take, always want to take the shot. You always want to take a shot. Two receivers each side, one minute to go. Frost steps up. Good catch by T. Cole at the 21-yard line. And a first down, West Georgia clock will stop with 58 seconds to go while the chains move. It's 20 to 17, Wolves with the lead. They keep the same formation in, two receivers each side. Clock is now running at 50 seconds. Oh, wow, a lot ran off. 49, 48, Frost takes a snap, looking, looking. Frost, still time, he gets it off to Jackson Carson, makes a man miss at the 20, out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Nice job right there by Harrison Frost, finding Jackson in the flat, and nice job by Jackson getting out of bounds to stop the clock there for the Wolves so we can catch our breath a little bit, but. yes. Thanks. They, they never think about the broadcasters know, right? when they run plays, do they? <laughs> no, so that was a drive <laughs> route right there. So everyone's driving towards the West Georgia sideline, but with Harrison having to break out of the pocket to the right side, nice job by the receivers just shutting it down and finding Jackson out in the flat. We are in tight, bunch tight. Two receivers bunched tight to each side, and Tremaine Jackson did not like what he saw. Timeout. Valasta State, and we will, I believe, yep, we'll keep it here. 
Timeout. That off the state. Your second charge, timeout in the hand. Well, this would be a big swing for the West Georgia Wolves if they can punch this in and make this a 27 to 17 game with the, the mistake there really by the Blazers going for it in their own territory. Got to take advantage yeah. of these opportunities. Cade, you got anything for us? I know the sideline had to be crunk after that stop by Keandre Williams. That stop by Keandre Williams, the crowd was the loudest I've heard it this season at Ray Lynn Field. There's no doubt the crowd is completely into this. The team is completely into this. Like I said, the last two home games, it seemed like something was off on the sidelines with the emotions. Not today. This team wants the peach basket. Kate, I can tell you what was off. Was what you, you weren't wearing the get-up that you got on right now. <laughs> I am getting so many compliments. I'm hearing whistles from the stands, but I can't tell if it, it's for the players or if it's for me. <laughs> Maybe we'll get you a blazer next game. I mean, look at this thing, Willie. <laughs> Second and five for West Georgia. Ball at the 15-yard line. Frost looking. in zone. Got a man. Touchdown, Steven Peterson. Nice pitch and catch there. Harrison Frost, his high school teammate, Steven Peterson, had one-on-one -on -one coverage to the single receiver to the top of the field. Fade route. Perfect ball. Nice catch. Leads to a touchdown for the West Georgia Wolves. Nice play there. A four-play, 36-yard drive in 51 seconds. That'll do, Donkey. Absolutely. Got to take advantage of the turnover on downs by the Blazers, and we did a great job by the Wolves. 32 seconds left to go, second quarter. Still plenty of time for Valhalla. No, it's, uh, this game's <laughs> far from over, but big play headed into halftime. All they no need question. All Valdosta needs is one second on that clock. Skinner will snap it. A little to the right, good hold by Hogan, and Pellegrino will put it through. It looks good because it is good. We will keep it here with 32 seconds left to go. And we might come back to that play right there as the turning point in this ball game as West Georgia's drive stalled out due to penalties. Valdosta tried to get a little aggressive. Keandre Williams with the play of the game so far here in half number one as we win or we lead. 27-17 here in the first half. Yeah, a little aggressive play call there by Valdosta State head coach. In your own territory, you know, you're trading blows back and forth. And I know he didn't want to give the ball back to the West Georgia offenses. They're now, I think, four for four uh, with possessions to touchdowns now. And tough break for the Blazers, but that's what we'll take all day as if you're a Wolf. We need to get Wolfie over here in the broadcast booth. Wolfie's yeah, he's up, hanging out Wolfie's up here up at the here. Sc scoreboard. Yeah, we got to get Wolfie to come and hang out with us for a minute. We'll get him on camera if he comes over here. He's in the he's in the center booth right here. We'll get Jared on. Jared's getting Wolfie over here. <laughs> we might have Wolfie up here in a second with us, uh, guys. As Brock Pellegrino is gonna is gonna oh, kick it away. Here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> he's coming. Wolfie's coming. After we'll get him on after the kickoff. We'll go to the the camera behind us. Wolfie, come on down. We'll get you on here in just a second. Let's call this play right here. We'll keep Wolfie right in between us. Pellegrino going to end over end, kick it down. Stand and up. unfortunately, we'll go out of bounds with 32 seconds on the clock. So we'll see if Valdosta wants to re-kick it or they're going to put it at the 35. What would you do, Wolfie? Would you make him re-kick it or would you put it at the 35? He's going <laughs> to say, uh, I think Sorry. he said re-kick. Re I think he said re-kick. <laughs> All right, Wolfie, got to turn around. We're going to turn, turn around, around and face this camera right here, Wolfie. The lights are too bright for Wolfie, he says. <laughs> the lights are too bright. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Wolfie says hello to everybody. We got a good game here tonight, <laughs> Wolfie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. First and 10, ball at the 35-yard line. Let's see if we can get out of here with, a, uh, with no score from Valdosta. They got two receivers to each side. He's trying to hide from the kids. <laughs> 27 to 17, your score. Durham looking to pass, looking, still looking, gonna throw, and he missed his man out of bounds. He was intended for, or was intended for number eight. Uh, let's see, Council Allen, the sophomore out of uh, Hialeah, Florida. You know where Hialeah, Florida is, Wolfie? North or south? <laughs> he's pointing that way. East. <laughs> I couldn't tell you where that is. Cade, Wikipedia. Highly of Florida. Any, any, anybody. All right. Trips to the left, one to the right. 
Let's find a way to get out of here to the half with a 10 point ball game. 26 seconds on the clock. They send Tompkins in motion. Durham to pass. We are rushing three. Durham all the time to throw. Throws it into deep. And Jalen Shepard dropped a pick at the 10 yard line. Jalen Shepard had a chance and he dropped it at the 10 yard line. Willie, I'm pretty sure he threw that ball 68 yards. He did, yeah. That was a big throw right there by Ivory. Good job by Jalen, just keeping it in front. And we would have, of course, loved to make the interception there, but <laughs> we'll, we'll take the break up here. We got third and long now for the Blazers. Third and 10, Wolfie, we're going to get off the field here. Yeah, he's, he's saying we're going to get off the field, so I like it. We've, like got, it. we've got all kinds of kids in the stadiums. They're turning back and looking up here in the booth. <laughs> got, we've got one with a Halloween costume on. It's good to see the support here tonight. All right, two receivers to each side. It's third and 10, 14 seconds on the clock. They're going to run Tompkins up the middle, up to the 45. The umpire helps us out again. That's the second time the umpire has made the stop. Eight seconds left on the clock. And we know that Durham can get it from the end zone. He picks up a first down, and we know that Durham can get it in the end zone from here. So they'll probably take at least one throw to the end zone with seven seconds on the clock, Willie. Yeah, he's got the arm strength to get this to the end zone here. Oh, surely. Surely. Surely West Georgia didn't call the timeout, Yeah, did they? no, I think the, the ref mistakenly called us, but it's it was a blazer timeout here. We're going to bring in some different personnel, probably put some receivers back there in the end zone to knock this out of the air. And Are you a fan of that? I know I, I know it's kind of hit or miss. I remember the Falcons used to put Julio Jones back deep. Yeah, you know, I, I would put anybody tall back there or anybody who's got a... Yeah, it was a timeout. Yeah, with, with Wolfie's height, we could just throw him back there in the end zone. I don't <laughs> yeah, know Wolfie, about your – you got your cleats on? I don't know about your vertical, <laughs> but uh, I'd put some height back there and see what if they can knock it out of the air. He's doing a little bit of a shuffle in here. I put it on my bucket list to call a game with Wolfie up here. That's right. All right, first and ten, but this play could be the last as we've got some guys deep. Durham looking, still looking, going to throw off his back foot and is thrown out of bounds with two faithful seconds on the clock. And Nate Masters is looking in the direction of Terrell Cole. So we're going to take Malcolm Mercer out of the game and we're going to take uh, Antoine Davis out of the game and put Kadarius Satterwhite and Terrell Cole in the ball game. And yes, Terrell Cole plays uh, offense. Yeah, this is a big throw. They've got the receivers split out to the left side. Their quarterback would ideally want to get to that left side, so it's a shorter throw just based on the hash mark. Here we go. Trips to the left. Durham looking. He does a spin move. He's going to throw it as far and as high as he can. Did he keep it in bounds? He did not. Jalen Shepard called it out of bounds, and that'll be the end of the first half. We'll take it, Wolfie. We lead 27-17. to 17. We're going to go down to the sidelines and get Cade Perrion with our head man, Coach David Dean. Thank you, Wolfie. We'll talk to you later. As uh, let's see, I'm looking for Coach Dean. He's at the 15. Got He's, a fist bump in the air. He's excited. That's yeah. a great half of football there for the Wolves. Take advantage of that turnover on downs and head into the locker room with the lead. Kate, Here, what go you Kate. got? Coach Dean, another battle for the Peach Basket. What a battle it is. Both offenses on fire today. Yeah, both offenses are playing really well. We knew they were going <laughs> to score a lot of points and, and we were going to have to match them. Proud of our offense right now. We're moving the ball really well. I uh, had, had one that we didn't get, but uh, it's a good football game. This is an explosive offense. we got to keep scoring. How much is the emotion in the crowd and the emotion on our sidelines making a difference? Well, it's a big difference. You know, anytime that you can get your crowd behind you and making big plays, and it just juices our guys up. They're doing the same thing on their side. This, this is a great atmosphere, great game. This is, this is one that you, that you love being a part of. All right. Thank you, Coach. Coach David Dean. Thank you, as always, Kate Perry, and good work at half number one. Willie, a quick takeaway, real quick. Yeah, well, perfection, really, by the West Georgia offense. I think they've scored every time they've touched the ball. Yeah. So Except that's for the one time, that right before the half, we gave it right back to them, but it didn't matter because oh, right. we stopped That's them. right, but that's right. But we were near, near perfection, yes. There, I mean, passing game's working, running game's working. That's what you want as an offense. Absolutely. Well, we're going to send it to half at UWG Productions and kiss 102.7. Timeout 
here on the field. Thank you all for listening in first half. You don't want to miss the second half here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest. That will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me. Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Verida is a national non-emergency medical transportation management company headquartered in Villa Rica, managing the transportation of Medicaid members to their medical appointments. With a keen focus on care, Verida uses best-in-class call centers, business operations, and technology services to meet the needs of members. Verida is partnering with the University of West Georgia to offer call center training, career development, and leadership development tracks that allow employees to advance in their careers. Our program is open to the West Georgia community. Verida is a proud supporter and sponsor of UW. WG Athletics, go Wolves! I've traveled to all 50 states, nine countries, performing hypnosis. I wrote my thesis in grad school on hypnosis. Started as a magician, I was a resident assistant in college, and then that parlayed into becoming a hypnotist full time. Uh, I oh. touch the face of someone a little hypnotized. She was a lucky person, but this is the face of someone like WTF. Okay, this is gonna be an OG of that. Who knows this person? I assume we kind of all do. I love people's reactions, I love meeting people. I want people to be skeptical, because when they're skeptical, then their jaw drops. Smile. <laughs> There were some zombies, uh, people hid people under chairs, there were superheroes. I just met two students tonight who showed me photos that we took time after time me coming to campus, so I'm very grateful that they come. I encourage you to be skeptical people, but we as a people, we as a country, change your opinion with more information. That's all I want. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin. How's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. With over 25 years real estate experience, we dedicate ourselves to doing business the right way all the time. Hi, I'm Tony Tritt, co-owner of Tritt Realty, a premier real estate brokerage serving Georgia and Alabama. Whether you're a first time buyer, a seasoned investor or builder, or maybe you're relocating to our area to embark on a new opportunity. We want to lock arms and guide you seamlessly through the entire real estate process from start to finish. We want to become your lifetime real estate partner. Find us online at trittrealty.com or come on by our office in downtown Carrollton and get started today. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions and we're going to show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups and over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm going to send it to Shamaya in the operation room.
Hey y'all, my name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. Here we have a in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm gonna throw the Kai in our TV booth. A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently, I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talk-back boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GVM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now, I'm going to throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver, to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our NAT sound for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our camera's feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions' YouTube page. Bye! <laughs> Hi guys, this is Danny. I am the director of community traditions here at the University of West Georgia. We're here at Glowglob. We're doing a bunch of different events, just welcoming back the freshmen to our university. I came to Glowglob tonight because I got the email. I saw it all over social media, so I thought it'd be a fun thing to do with my friends. Honestly, me and my buddies were kind of bored, and we heard about it, we were like, okay, let's go. We wanted to get out of the house, and we usually get out about once, not a week. Uh, me and my friends just wanted to three in something new and different. Kind of a social event, we just wanted to get out of the dorm. I totally whipped her butt in some mini golf. <laughs> We did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's good. I don't usually win. I won my game, but it was fun. Just a little. <laughs> Not me. I cheated. No. She cheated. <laughs> she cheated the whole time. Not even a little bit. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I've been practicing all my life for it, so, you know. Yeah, I'm kind of a master at it. Yeah, we might know. We might know. We might know, y'all. Hey, let's see if I can play. I don't really know how to play for it, but we're going to get it going today. When you throw it, you gotta flick your wrist very good. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Let me shoot one like I'm carry. Uh, the glasses. Yes, I got this cool band. Uh, I like the atmosphere. I like the music, the blue lights, the glow in the dark is really cool. My favorite golf player? <laughs> Tiger Woods, I guess. <laughs> uh, Tiger Woods. I've seen him in person. Tiger <laughs> Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans.
Rebecca? Are you having a fun time? Yes. Did you skate a lot? Yeah. You guys having fun? Yes, having tons of fun. Loving it, loving it. I've only fallen one time though, so. I haven't fallen yet, but. Not yet, so I guess she's beating you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Are you falling a lot? Yeah. Do you want me to hold your hand? Yeah. Liking the skate night so far? It's nice, I'm not gonna lie. Have you fallen yet? Nah, not once. Have you fallen yet? Uh, not yet, but I'm about to. Skate a lot? I do. You look like it, you're pretty good. Have I fallen plenty? <laughs> skate backwards? Yeah. Can you show us? That's better than I can do, don't fall. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest. That will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me. Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia.
And welcome back in to halftime here. It's the end of halftime, I should say. Raylan Field and University Stadium and the Wolves lead 27 to 17 over the Valdosta State Blazers. Really and truly, Willie, you take a look at our stat sheet. I mean, Harrison Cross has been dominant. 19 to 24 passing. Jackson Carson, two touchdown rushes. Xavier Robinson, Jalen Tarver, and that defense are doing work. Really two big pass plays that are keeping Valdosta in this football game. They are, and really the, the point of emphasis for the first half is going to be that turnover on downs for Valdosta State. Yeah. That's a big momentum switch for what in favor of West Georgia, being able to put seven points on the board and getting the game up to 27, 10 point lead 27 to 17 and we'll see if that comes back to haunt Valdosta State here in the later half of this game. Ivory Durham and company do get the ball to start here in the second half so we'll see what the Valdosta State Blazers uh, can do here on their opening drive. Brock Pellegrino will kick it off. Now math is not my strong suit but I do know this 120 or uh, 61 plus 58 is 119. So 119 of their yards came in two plays. Wow. They only had 196 yards on the other 29 plays. Yeah, again, you just got to keep the ball in front of you if you're a defense like West Georgia. Their big play offense, Valdosta State is, and if you can keep the, eliminate the big plays, and we've got a good chance of winning this game. Yeah, that's what it's all about, eliminate the big play. End over end kick, Seth McGill will take it from his own six yard line to the 20-25, and we make the tackle uh, at the 32 yard line. That was number one, Javen West making the stop. Yeah, nice play there by Javen West on the special teams unit flying down there making the tackle here. It'd be it's great if West Georgia's defense can force a three and out here to start the second half. It would be ideal as that big offensive line comes and makes its way out for the Blazers. West Florida up 45 to 17. That's looking like almost a final against Mississippi College. North Greenville up 28 to 27 on West Al. That's a good football game. And Delta beat Shorter on Thursday night. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They'll give it to Tompkins with McGill. Blocking it, he lost the football. He lost the football, ball still on the ground. I think we got it. I think we got it. We did. I think Keith Harris is the one that forced it. If you even want to say he forced it, but Right on cue, Willie. We come out and make, the, make a big play on defense. Yeah, you could not write that up any better for the West Georgia Wolves defense. Forcing their turnover on first down. First play out of the second half, giving the offense of West Georgia great field position. This is where you've got to capitalize on these types of opportunities here yes. and take advantage of it. And Deontay Overstreet was the man who, uh, yeah, it was Keith Harris. Keith Harris forced the fumble. Way to go, Keith. And it was Deontay Overstreet, the junior, Preseason off goal South Conference defensive back reigning from Tiff County, Georgia. And we'll start on plus territory at the 46. This is where you take this the This is where you <laughs> take the shot that I was talking about right before halftime. We've got no running back in the backfield. Let's see if we take a shot at the end zone. Five wide receivers. We'll fake it to Zay Britt. Now throw it to him right side. He's across midfield, 45 40, and he takes a big hit but gets near the first down marker. Flag on the play. Could be coming back. Unfortunately, Zay Britt with a nice catch. Yeah, probably going to get holding out here by one of the receivers of West Georgia. I like the play call, though, out of the half, bringing the receiver in motion, flipping it to him in the backfield. You've seen that a lot tonight, trying to out leverage Valdosta State's defense side to side, beat him with speed. There was no foul on the play. Awesome. All right, we'll, we'll take it. We we'll talked him out of Move this chains. Let's go. I think it's going to be second down, but good oh, play on first down. I will say this. They got a favorable spot. There was no flag, but they got a favorable spot across the 40 to the 39-yard line as one of our offensive linemen just slung a piece of tape about 20 yards back. Parker Gibbs has a – I'm sure he threw the shot put in high school. Two tight, one left, one kind of a sniffer. We'll give it to Jackson Carson, left side. Carson makes the man miss at the line of scrimmage and falls forward. And he's going to be a yard short of it's the first down. Looked like he got it. Questionable spot here by that side judge up there. Yeah. I had him at least at the 35. At the, yeah, about yeah. the 40 or yeah, the 36 and a yeah. half. That's a lot of math for me. <laughs> Nonetheless, you've got probably two plays to get a yard. Yeah, and I, uh, there, there should be one person getting this football. And his name's jo Jackson Carson here. Two receivers right, two tight left. Mason Yost and Ian Hinkle. We bring Hinkle in motion, and we'll rocket toss it out to Carson. Makes a cut in the ground and gets up to the 30. First down, West Georgia. 
little extracurricular activities going on. What? Look for that to be a theme here in the second half of this game. Gets a little bit of separation in the scores, but great pickup by Jackson Carson there. Wolves are cooking here in and the Bri second half. And Bryce Carlson is loving it, the run game coordinator from West Georgia. Man, he was fired up with Ian Hinkle driving this guy down the sideline. Two receivers to each side, Carson to Harrison Frost left. He'll hand it to him right side. Good combo blocked by Kyrie Jones, and we slip. Had a chance to get five or six yards there. We got a yard, and unfortunately, Jackson's feet went a little too fast for him right there. Yeah, Choked on himself. On the bit. grass field, temperature dropping. That gets a little moist, and got to keep those feet under you when you're making those cuts. He had a lot of room to run. That would have been a big play, but brings up second and long here for the Wolves. Oh, they give us an extra yard. I like it. To the 28-yard line. Three receivers left, tight right. We've seen this a couple times tonight. 11 personnel for West Georgia. Give it to Carson. Does a Ooh. nice job. Makes a man miss. And then puts his foot back in the ground and gets up field and gets three yards. And it will be third and five. I've said this in previous games, but the body control of Jackson Carson to be able to plant and just stop all of his momentum and almost jump back is unbelievable for his stature. He's 5'7", 5'8", 225. I mean, just could can make any juke yeah. move a, a little, you know, 5'8", yeah. 160 <laughs> running back can do. Trips to the left, receiver to the right is Terrell Cole. Third and five, Frost looking the whole way to T. Cole. He's got him in the end zone, and he come down with it. Ty oh, 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 incomplete. This backfield judge said he looked like he was going to say he called it, and then he looked to the side official trailing, and he said he didn't catch it. Oh, man. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one fade route to the West Georgia Wolves sideline. Good pitch and catch. We have got the replay in front of us. Let's see. Yeah, it looks I, like he was out of bounds. Uh, good, yeah. good call there by the official. Yeah, good call indeed. Two oh, receivers, free play. free play. Got it. We got it. We're going to have a first down. Frost looking. Frost looking. End zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Terrell Cole. Touchdown on fourth and five for the 25. Touchdown, T. Cole. Nice play by Harrison Frost and T. Cole just being on the same page there. Free play with the false. Result of the play, touchdown. Yeah, free play there with the offsides by Valdosta State, and he just threw it up on the same page with T. Cole. A little bit of a back shoulder throw, and hey, pitch and catch, seven points for the Wolves. That's how you want to start the second half versus Valdosta State. You force a turnover, you go seven plays, 46 yards in two minutes and 50 seconds, boys and girls. Can't draw it up a better way to start the half. Good snap from Skinner, good hold by Hogan. Kick is up, it looks good because it is good. Timeout on the field, 11.57 to go. We've doubled up Valdosta here in the third quarter. Timeout. It's 34 Timeout. to 17. Media. Right here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia.
Here we go, UWG Productions, a kiss 102.7, 11.57 to go, quarter number three. West Georgia leads 34 to 17. You could not have asked for a better way to start quarter number three. A strip by Keith Harris, a recovery by Deontay Overstreet, and a seven play, 46 yard touchdown drive from Harrison Frost to Terrell Cole, and Brock Pellegrino puts his foot into it and gets it inside the five to the four, and here comes Seth McGill. McGill, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and Devontae Matthews knocks him out of bounds at around the 45-yard line, and they'll mark it up near midfield. My goodness. Yeah. Which That's you, been a weak point tonight. It has, yeah. The special teams coverage is – they've got a bunch formation before they even kick the ball off, and I'm not sure if that's – working in the favor for the Wolves, but Valdosta State coming out of three straight losses. Big turnover on downs before the second half where the Wolves capitalize. They come out of halftime, fumble the ball, the Wolves score. You got to think their spirit's about to be broken, you know, and this is where West Georgia Wolves, if they can make one more stop and maybe put some more points on the board, then I think Valdosta State's going to have a long drive home. Two receivers left, one right, two receiver or two uh, running backs in the backfield. That's McGill and that's Tompkins and a flag and a delay a game to start. They're out of sync. Delay a game. Offense, five yard penalty, first down. That's actually Travis Tisdale, a new running back in the ball game. Haven't seen him tonight. Tompkins out, Tisdale in the ball game, right to the left of Ivory Durham, McGill beside him on the right side. We lined up off sides, we don't call it luckily. And here comes Deontay Overstreet and slings Seth McGill down to the ground. My goodness, what a play by Deontay Overstreet. A loss of eight. It's gonna be second in about 20, Willie. Yeah, big play there, just not off the state. That's a great job by Overstreet. They got away with the face mask there, too. But yeah. great job of Overstreet taking on the block, not giving away his outside leverage. And really, the running back just ran to him. A great tackle there for well, a big loss. Well, Tisdale, we haven't seen him tonight, and he didn't block. He didn't attempt to block no. Overstreet right no, there. No, he did not. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They'll fake it. Durham looking to pass, and here comes the sack. No, oh, they got away out of it. Here comes Durham. He's looking, he's looking, and now he's just going to throw it away. We had him corralled up. Big Demetrius Lofton had him, and then Amos Don ran him about 20 yards back the other way. Man, he's so elusive, and luckily it's third down, and here comes our 7 DB package on the field. That's right. You just got to keep it in front of you now, third and 24 to go yeah. and that quarterback Ivory he's hard to put down looks like he put some sleeves on at halftime now he's getting a little chilly he's probably not used to this <laughs> North Georgia heat <laughs> Kate you got anything for us down there man you looking good just lots of emotion down here including myself this is a fun ball game Wolves up by 17 against the hated Valdosta team the Blazers Ivory Durham the only the thing I can add is I feel like Ivory Durham has been at Valdosta since about 1998. I think he has, Kate. <laughs> it's fourth down. He'll roll to his right and he'll overshoot it. Open receiver and it would about it would have been about 20 yards short of the, of the first down marker. Great defensive stop by the Wolves and I believe this is their first punt of the day. I think I it think is. I think it is. You're right. I we think it is their first punt and Ronnie Blackman will return it so Maybe we'll get to talk a little bit about Ronnie Blackman coming up because he had quite the ball game last week. He sure did. Eston Thiel, I believe, will punt it away. He kind of does all the duties, yeah. He'll punt it away. And Ronnie Blackman back deep. Just an end over end wobbly kick and we'll hightail it out of bounds near the 37 yard line. So Ronnie Blackman does not get an opportunity to return it. But I tell you this, Willie, Ronnie Blackman had <laughs> He hit quite the game last week. He had 193 total yards um, or receiving, and then I don't know how many he ended up having uh, on return yards, but he had quite quite a lot and fifth most in one game in school history. Yeah, that's awesome. It just comes to a great player, Ronnie. He's a fundamental guy during the practice week, does everything the right way, and great connection with Harrison Frost. He was mightily needed last week and yeah. came through when we needed him most. Absolutely. Two receivers left, one to the right. Here comes Hinkle in motion. That 
Met in motion we've seen a lot tonight. Frost throws it out to Hinkle, who caught it at the 40 to the 45 near midfield. First down West Georgia, gained a 12. I love the play action fake bootleg we've got going on tonight. We've done that quite a few times and with the run success that we've had, it opens up the bootleg and it's been positive yards on every time we've run it. So great play call there by Coach Craig and I have a feeling Dean. you love every pass. I do love every pass, especially <laughs> if they're wide open. 10.24 to go on the third quarter clock. We lead 34-17. We give to Jackson Carson left side. 45-40. 35, Jackson Carson to the 30-yard line, 20 yards and a first down, West Georgia. West Georgia's got all the momentum here, and that's where you just got to put the pedal to the metal. All gas, no brakes. Got to punch it in for some more points, and let's send the Blazers home packing. <laughs> hey, a lot of golf left to play with. A lot of golf. We're not packing anybody a lot of up golf. anytime soon. Three, two receivers to the right, one to the left. I've been around too long to know that. You have too. But I agree with you. Yeah, tight that's a right. long right. <laughs> <laughs> tight right. One receiver to the left. We're in a pistol look. We'll give to Carson left side. He'll make a cut. 30, 25, 20. Look at Jackson Carson inside the 15 to the 13. Eat, young man. A 17-yard run for Jackson Carson and a first down. Yeah, just gashing Valdosta State on these outside run, run plays. Great job of the O-line. They're just creating the push that we're seeing on the replay here by the left side is just unbelievable. Gives a lot yeah. of daylight for Jackson to run through. Parker Gibbs, Jalen... Jalen Moore, David Biden getting it done down there. Austin Donaldson, Kyrie Jones. Cade could probably run through that <laughs> hole. Here comes Carson, right side, cuts back to the 10, inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. We are getting whatever we want up front right now. I just keep handing it to Jackson. We're gonna bring in Darius here as he needs a blow. But oh, here comes a t-shirt toss. Oh my gosh. We got a slingshot. Oh, they're gonna I was about to say, we gotta wait, wait to the throw. time. We gotta wait to the timeout here. Yeah, that was not a throw. That had to be something else. Receiver to each side. We're tight right. Too tight. They're actually tight left and an H back that comes in motion now to the left. We're gonna throw it. Looking for T. Cole. In zone, a lot of hands. We we'll tried a one-on-one -on -one and just didn't get the call. And we'll go third down and four. I like the good physical no call right there. I like the play call. I don't like the throw. He's yeah. got to be more back shoulder. I think he put it out in front of him too much. Just got to hit him on the back shoulder there and let him be able to kind of use his body to fend off the, the corner there. Brings up third down for the Wolves. Here comes Jacob Pinch in the ball game for LaPerion Perry. Darius Clark still in the game. We still have Mason Yost and Hinkle in. It's too tight. Now we'll flip the formation and send two receivers. So twins to the left. We'll go to a tight end to each side. Now we're trying to line up Hinkle on the right. We get it. Four seconds on the play clock. Frost looking, looking. End zone. Got a man. Touchdown, Terrell Cole. They ran the little rub route. Touchdown, Terrell Cole. Back of the end zone. Yeah, that play call's got a great name that I can't actually disclose on the air, but great <laughs> play call, great throw. Back shoulder throw on the rub route there to T. Cole. Harrison Frost having a night tonight. Jacob Pinch made that happen. He ran that, ran the inside, uh, inside rub little route. Rub we'll, route. Call we'll call it, it a play, rub whatever you <laughs> pick play. And T Cole is wide open. Great play call next door by Graham Craig and company. And a touchdown, West Georgia, 40 to 17. Snap a little high handle and put through it. Looks good because it is good. It is 41 to 17. Leave no doubt here in quarter number three. Timeout on the field. 8.25 to go here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. We'll be back for more right after this. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions, and we're going to show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups, and over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm going to send it to Shamaya in the operation room. Hey, y'all. My name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. 
here we have an in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm going to start a Kai in our TV booth. A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently, I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talk-back boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GVM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now, I'm going to throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver, to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our NAT sound for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our camera's feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions' YouTube page. Bye! Thank you, Kai and Shemaya, for that UWG Productions promo right there. If you are a college student out there, guys, we're going to have a, a cool drone shot coming up. You're not going to want to miss. But if you're a college student and you want to do mass media, come to West Georgia, man. I did. Willie did. Look where we're at. Calling on UWG Productions <laughs> with some great students there getting some awesome work. More importantly, though, we're up 41-17. to 17. That's got to feel nice against these Valdosta State Blazers. But... A lot of golf left to be played as McGill takes it from the 12, 25, 30. McGill is dragged down. Devontae Matthews, I think, has made every special team's tackle tonight. <laughs> with, the, with the returns, <laughs> I'm trying not to. With the returns they're getting, you almost would just want to kick it out of bounds and let them have it at the 35, yeah. you know? I mean, they're getting close to it every time. I think it would eliminate any potential for big play, but hey. Oh, they say he stepped out at the 32. I thought he got up near the 40, it, yeah, to be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> All right. Momentum on West Georgia side. Let's ride the wave some more, right? It seems like we still have a great crowd here tonight. Looking forward to seeing them. It's been, been pretty awesome tonight, guys. Four, two, five look for West Georgia. Trips to the right, one to the left. Here's Tompkins. He busts one up the middle to the 40. We're trying to corral him at the 42. Now he comes in. All 11 guys on the ball for West Georgia. That's nice, but we gave up 11 in a first down. Valdosta, they're one of their best runs of the night. Yeah, it, just carrying the pile there for number 20 for the Blazers, Tompkins. As a matter of fact, that's their longest run of the night, 11 really? yards, yes. <laughs> Same look, trips right, one to left. They'll throw it to uh, Valley, I believe is who that is out there. Number 13, uh, Victor Talley. Talley. Yeah, Talley out there, nice catch. 6'5", 213, that's a big receiver they got. What's a GR? Gra graduate. Graduate? Right. Graduate, yeah. Second and seven for Valdosta State near midfield. They're at the 47 yard line, their own 47. With 7.28 to go here in the third quarter. Wolves with a 41-17 lead over the Blazers of Valdosta State. Trips to the left, left, kind of a bunch formation. They'll put uh, Tompkins out in, in, pre in coverage, and uh, Carter made a great play on the ball. B.K. Dobbins. And a late flag comes flying in from that side, Judge. Nice. Rob yeah, Robert Carter knocked it away. B.K. Smith, the intended receiver, but we're going to get an unsportsmanlike, I believe, on Robert Carter. Nice play there initially with the, the read. The outside hitch route broke on it really well. He got his hand in there. Going on. I tell you what, that sideline for Valdosta State's got to be in that side, that official's ear. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense, number four. 15 yard penalty, first down. He must have said something because he definitely didn't push or anything. He must have definitely said something that was very unkind. Yeah, that's just one you just, you know, you, you got to shake your head at. We're making great plays. We don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot and give them any momentum right now. You make a great play, just turn around, get back to your own huddle. I've always been told you have the right to say whatever you want to, but it doesn't mean it won't get you in trouble. 
<laughs> uh, 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 what, what? Oh, okay. He gave him just an incomplete. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything. No. Little reverse. They'll give it to him. And Demetrius Lofton says, you shall not pass. Loss of two. They tried a little trick reverse play on the inside slot guy. And uh, we just ate it up. Demetrius Lofton did a great job staying home on the backside. He did. Reverse trickery. We just, no one bit on the play. Stayed at home. Nice play by the defense. I know that ref who threw that flag, he's been doing this for a lot of years, and let me just tell you, he's not well liked, and that's all I'm gonna say about it. Second and 12, ball on their own, a ball on their own 40 yard line for Valdosta State. Here, midway through the third quarter. High snap handled, they're getting out here to receiver, complete at the 40, and he falls back, and great play there again. Antoine Davis kind of pushing and shoving, but that was number 43, Anthony Rochester, coming up from his backside safety position. Yeah, again, nice job by the defense, flying to the football with the quick screen outside, forcing a third and long for the Blazers. Nice job. Third and 10. Trips to the left, but they have that receiver basically hugging the left tackle, and then a the receiver to the right. They fake it. Durham looking to pass, has a man open, complete at the 25-yard line. First down, Valdosta State. Jalen Shepard makes the stop. A little miscommunication. Coach Masters not liking that. And a first down, Valdosta complete to Davey Henderson, the 6'2", 180-pound graduate transfer. Yeah, I like that play by Valdosta State. That receiver just kind of sits down and finds the soft hole in the coverage, kind of an out and up route, just sit along the sideline. Nice pitch and catch from Ivory for first down for the Blazers. Yeah, first and 10, ball at the West Georgia 24 yard line. Different look, two receivers to the left now, one to the right, they're tight right. And Tompkins the running back, Durham looking, gonna throw a deep ball and it's intercepted. Kadarius Satterwhite intercepted on the two yard line. Kadarius Satterwhite. What a catch by Kadarius. Really miscommunication between Durham and his receiver. He threw a uh, fade and, and uh, the receiver ran an out. And what do we got? I mean, he clearly caught it. I don't know what the Valdosta State player is trying to do, but nice <laughs> interception there. Miscommunication by Ivory and his receiver. The receiver sat down and Ivory threw a go ball. Big play for the defense once again. West Georgia with all the momentum here in the second half. Yeah, Kadarius Satterwhite, the senior from Noonan with a big catch inside. They're gonna mark it officially on the two yard line. First and 10, West Georgia with 518 to go here in quarter number three. And wouldn't you like a nice drive right here to wrap this bad boy up? Absolutely, one more touchdown would seal the deal here. I know you don't like me call, it's calling okay. this game we, early. But. I'll let you say it if we <laughs> score right here. How about that? <laughs> I'm looking for Just with how fast this Val Austin team can score. Absolutely. And what we've seen from them so far. I don't like it till there's triple zeros, but we'll give it to Carson up the middle. He'll get five, he'll get six yards, seven yards, and the offensive and defensive line, or the offensive line for West Georgia just pushing Valdosta back now. Just having their way with Valdosta at the moment. Great job, uh, pretty much all night by the offensive line of West Georgia, just pushing them around for big plays on first down, and it's been a good game for the offense. Second and three, ball on the 11-yard line. Same formation, too tight, two re uh, receiver to each side. We'll hand it to Carson, left side, up to the 15, and now up to the 16 yard line. And I believe that was Zach Obi just suplexed a Valdosta State Blazer. Oh my goodness. That's, that's did, did twice we get in, that? a, that's we twice get in that? a row. Did we get that on the UWG Productions instant replay? He was down at about the, the five. I don't know if we did or not. But we just soup, Zach Kobe just suplexed the guy. Let's see if we get it right here. Watch Zach Kobe top of your screen, number 85. He'll come out of the screen, but he just drove his man. <laughs> Physical blocking. On a first down, 418 to go here, third quarter. We'll hand it to Carson right side. Carson cuts back across the grid, oh. and he just is tripped up near the 20 yard line. Still got almost four <laughs> yards out of it. We'll take that as the best friend West Georgia has right now. This is, is the clock. This is where you run an 18 play drive down the field, get this clock down to about eight minutes in the fourth quarter as we're ticking under four minutes here to yeah. the third and start warming up those buses. 
20-yard line. They officially marked the first down marker. 344 to go, third quarter, 41 to 17. West Georgia with the lead. If you're joining us on UWG Productions and Kiss 102.7, thank you all for watching tonight and listening. We'll send Ronnie Blackman back in motion across, and we're going to take a timeout. Coach Dean wants a timeout to set up this second down and about seven. Timeout, West Georgia. Their first charge timeout of the half. So we will keep it here. No media timeout here in quarter number three is. Oh, we've already hit our media timeout, I should say, in quarter number three is. Willie, what say you right now? Or actually, let's go down. Where's our good friend Cade Perry? And let's go on down to Cade on the sideline and talk to us a little How bit. How did I know y'all were going to come down to me? <laughs> I, I could tell Willie didn't want to talk, so now you're going to come down to me. <laughs> One thing I have noticed on the sideline is quarterback Harrison Frost is super duper pumped up, and it, it's showing on the field. After the second offensive drive in the first half, he came off the field and you could feel his intensity with his receivers. He wanted those guys to focus and super focus, and it's showing with, with the scoreboard being 41 to 17. Harrison yeah. Frost is having himself a ball game. Yeah, he's 23 of 30, 245 and four touchdowns. Jackson Carson just went, I believe, hit his career high, 150 yards. We throw the middle screen to Zay, uh, Zay Britt, 30, Zay Britt, 40. Look at the Jets, 50, 40, 35, 30. Zay Britt, 25, 20, slung out of bounds. The middle screen to perfection, Willie. A huge gain in a first down, West Georgia. Yeah, great play. We got a late flag here by the sideline official to the, the wall. Wolves, but a little bit of a fake outside zone. Let's see what the official calls. Sideline warning. Offense. All right, that doesn't affect us. We got a <laughs> fake, fake run in the backfield with the O-line getting outside of the screen pass and pure speed right there by number 10 for us. Say Brit. Yes, yeah, 64 yards for the sophomore out of Oxford, Oxford Alabama. Yeah, Just he's, off if, 20. if you saw the uh, replay, you had the center, David Bodden, out there delivering the block. And great play call by Coach Dean and Coach Craig there, getting us in the red zone. Two receivers to each side. Jackson Carson beside Harrison Frost. He'll run it. Left side, 10. Jackson Carson, five spins. Did he get it in? No, they're going to mark him down at the one. A nice 15-yard run by Jackson Carson. And another West Georgia Wolves first down. Well, that'll take Harrison over 300 yards here in the third quarter and bringing in the heavy package here. Yeah, here comes here comes some T-shirts in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> having a, having a lot of fun tonight. It's fun when you win. Oh, we had a cheerleader eat it on the tart <laughs> on the sideline. Here comes the Wild Wolf, right? This is going to be the Wild Wolf. No, we're not. We'll just hand it to Carson. Up the middle, he dies. Touchdown, West Georgia. Jackson Carson hurdles in from the two-yard line. His third touchdown of the night, the third time he's had three touchdowns in the game. He's hit his career high tonight, and he's just crawling up the national or the NCAA leaderboard in uh, rushing touchdowns. It is 47 to 17, West Georgia. David Bodden Just driving the, people. All, oh. all of the O-line for West Georgia should be MVP for this game. They've done a heck of a job having their way with Valdosta State all night long. Skinner to snap it. Good snap, good hold by Hogan. Kick is up. It looks good because it is good. And the first person to meet everybody on the field is Bryce Carlson, the run game coordinator. Look at this offensive line. Great work tonight from this offensive line. Austin Donaldson, Raymond Lewis, Kyrie Jones, uh, Jalen Moore, Brandon Pippett, David Bodden. Great work by them all. They don't get enough love. If we had an unsung hero tonight, it'd definitely be th those guys. Absolutely. They've done a great job tonight in the run game. And I can't say enough about this Wolves team. You know, to fight last week, have a tough game for North, North Greenville. Coming off two straight losses, they had to battle that whole game and come out on top. And then, hey, you practice all week for this type of game, this type of environment versus your in-state rival, Valdosta State, having their way. Big time game for the Wolves tonight. And man, it's been exciting to be a part of, Matt. Absolutely, as you see the West Georgia sideline there. Uh, 2.14 to go third quarter. I know we're going to keep it here. 
as Pellegrino's going to kick it off. A six play, 97 yard drive for the Wolves. Coaches next door are loving it too. Yeah, they're all smiles now. Coach Graham, the offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, big smile on his face. And it's a fun night to be a Wolf. 48 to 17. 31 point lead for the Wolves. The same number as Brock Pellegrino. He'll kick it end over end to McGill. He'll take it from the 12. McGill outside 25 and a great special teams play by Jalen Shepard. Great play by Jalen Shepard, the sophomore from Hogansville and Callaway High School. Coach Dean on the sideline fired up. Yeah, he is. Tonight, you know this means a lot to yeah. him. I think we're gonna talk about the, the different receivers now. How about we, this? we should, yeah, hear this stat, uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this great stat as you see Coach David Dean as a wide receiver himself. 12 different receivers have called a pass tonight for West Georgia. That's probably probably, probably a, a record. record. Yeah. I might yeah. need to fact check that, but that's a great job by hey, look at that. the staff. and Hungry like a wolf. That's right. <laughs> Great job by the staff yeah. and Harrison Frost, spreading the love to all the different talented players we have. What a fun atmosphere. Trips to the right, one to the left. Ivory Durham gonna run the quarterback power and we just swallowed them, swallowed them whole. Jalen Tarver out of Columbia, South Carolina, about where your aunt and mom are from, That's right? right. If I That's remember right. that correct. They go to AC4? My cousin, my yeah, my yeah. aunt's uh, son played baseball, was a state championship there, state champion there at AC4. And, they're really talented in high school in Columbia, South uh, Carolina. Jalen Tarver made a great play there. A gain of one on the quarterback run. Two receivers right, one to the left, tight right. He's kind of an H-back. And I believe that is Thompson, the running back. They'll hand it to him up the middle. Keandre Williams hits him right at the 30. He might have got a yard. Keandre Williams having a nice ball game tonight. It's third down. I want everybody, if we can, get a camera on Cade Perrion. Cade Perrion is standing beside our defensive line coach, Pat Gamble. You want to see what an NFL football player looks like and what not an NFL football player looks like? That's what you have. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that shot in a minute. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Third down, big play. Here's Durham, spins out of it. Going to throw on the run, and it's incomplete. Just missed it a little to the right. No good. Good defense by Kadarius Satterwhite. The intended receiver is number two, B.K. Smith. And it's going to be fourth and eight. This is fun. This is fun. <laughs> this is fun to be a part of in-state rivalry for the Peach Basket. we got a concert going on downtown in the square tonight, but... Besides the concert, it's going to be a fun time tonight in Carrollton, Georgia. 51 seconds left in third quarter play. Ronnie Blackman back deep. Eston Thiel will punt it away. We had a lot of alumni show up for this game, too. That's exciting to see yeah, a lot of former players. I have a lot of friends in town tonight from my tenure here. And what a great environment to show up in a rivalry game just like this. Absolutely. High snap. Thiel handle, handles it. And he kind of shanks, shanks, shanks it a little Ooh. bit. That went out near mid, before midfield, I think. West Jordan is going to have a short field. And they're going to mark it right at midfield. Wow. West Georgia with short field. I would assume this would be the last drive for the first team if they get a score right here. Absolutely. I keep Harrison Frost in this game, put together one more good drive, and then sit him on the bench and give him the handshake and say, nice job, team. And number one offensive line is still in there. Harrison Frost in there. We'll go with Darius Clark. So two receivers to the right, one to the left. Have an H back to the left as Darius Clark is in at running back. Hinkle the H back. We'll fake it, throw it out here to Ian Hinkle. Hinkle with the catch and he didn't go anywhere. Good play in the open field. Give credit to their man, Jackson Bull, the senior linebacker from Fleming Island, Florida. Anybody got an idea where Fleming Island, Florida is? Any guesses? I'm looking at you, Cade. Yeah. And, we're both, <laughs> and we're both looking at you, Cade. <laughs> it is on the Atlantic coast, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> Two receivers to each side, second and 10. Good play by that young man. Frost 
Second and 10 run to Darius Clark. He bounces it outside to the 46, to the 40. Well, he's laying at the 45. They're going to mark him at the 46. Four yard gain, second, or now third, and about four. And that'll be the last play of the fourth quarter. Yes, last play. And Coach Dean is going to rally the entire football team right at midfield and tell them don't do anything dumb. All right, we played three here at Carrollton. 48-17, your score on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. I was a resident assistant in college, and then that parlayed into becoming a hypnotist full time. Oh, my God. This is the face of someone a little hypnotized. your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. This live drone shot is courtesy of UWG's Department of Digital Experience out of the School of Communication, Film, and Media. The school offers bachelor degrees in film and video production and mass communications. Plus, they have a brand new master's degree in digital and social media communication. Students can get involved with any of the school's award-winning experiential labs to UWG Productions, Bluestone Public Relations, Digital Experiences, SCFM Productions, the West Georgia Newspaper, Wolf Radio, and WUTV. Check out the school to start your career in communication, film, and media today. Third down and seven. Here's Frost. Empty, backfield, and tip and incomplete. And it'll be fourth down for the Wolves and should be our first punt of the game. We'll see, but this is a student-led broadcast. Everybody other than me and you, and I think Corey, Back in, back in the production studio are students here at the University of West Georgia. And, and it's like we got a bunch of guys working for ESPN here. I mean, it, it's awesome. It is, and we've talked about it before, but the setup that we have here with the Coliseum, the production room here, and just the information that we're fed throughout the course of the game. I mean, we can pull up a stat and just throw it on the screen before you real quickly. And, man, hats off to these, these students. What a great team to be a part of. Riley Mason drops the ball. Uh, hit him right in the hands, and he'll have to punt it away. And it takes a West Georgia bounce inside the inside the ten. When it's your night, it is your night, Willie. Riley does a lot of things right <laughs> off the field, so he gets a lot of good luck. He must have <laughs> said "I love you" to his mother before the game, so he's he gets a lot of good bounces. That ball hit him right in the numbers. He dropped it and just tried to kick it out as best he could. And it landed at the 24 and took a West Georgia bounce all the way to the nine yard line. What a break by the Wolves. You got the whole coaching staff in the box next to me just smiling and having a good time. <laughs> this is what it's all about here on a Saturday night in Carrollton, Georgia. <laughs> oh, man. 
Joe giving Riley a hard time down there. Everybody giving Riley a hard time. What's there to give a hard time about? He just put the pin to That's right. I did, I did he, my job, he, Coach. He did his job, baby. Didn't have to look pretty. <laughs> That's like Cade. <laughs> Two running backs, three running backs. They'll give it to McGill, and he's going nowhere. There's that man again, Xavier Robinson. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Second and 12 for the uh, for the Blazers. Yeah, if you look over to that Valdosta State sideline, there's a lot of long faces over there. This has been a tough game for them. They fought hard in the first half, but really, it came down to that second half, or that right oh. before second. We got a sword fight. We got, versus a, light, we got a lightsaber, lightsaber match. fight versus Wolfie and the Blazer. This oh is my awesome. Goodness. <laughs> Lightsaber match. Who's gonna win? This is more entertaining than the game. <laughs> here they go. They'll throw it out here to the receiver, complete uh, to B. That's uh, B. K. Smith. As Wolfie and Blazer are still going at it. That's gonna be close to a first down. No, it's about three go. yards short. Wolfie's got some moves out there. <laughs> he learned it from us. He was up here earlier. He was all right. We gave him the the coaching. It's second or third down and four. I'm sorry, folks. I'm just so entertained by Wolfie and Blazer going at it <laughs> on a Jedi Knight basis over there. It's third down. They send a man in motion. Durham looking to pass, throwing deep, and it's incomplete. And don't call a late hit, and they will and call they a late would. hit. I mean, I Canaria Satterwhite got to be smarter than that. Oh, Wolfie's taking the blazer down. <laughs> and Wolfie's winning. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> and nobody's even watching the game anymore. Everybody's watching Wolfie. Everybody's watching Wolfie. <laughs> nobody's watching the game anymore. <laughs> so Everyone's it. watching Wolfie. <laughs> what has this game turned into? Oh, this has been awesome. <laughs> this has been. We do awesome. have a flag. It's going to be a late hit on Kadarius Satterwhite. Dead ball, first and foul, defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. They, they hug it out. What a night it's been here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh. All right, we get back to the ball, <laughs> ball game now as. The original line of scrimmage was the 15-yard line. What are we doing? Guys, it's simple math. 15 from the 15 is 30. Let's get it going. Zebras. Looking at the scores from around the uh, college football scene, Alabama's responded pretty well. They're holding the pirate offense of Mike Leach to zero right now. It's 24 nothing. Mm. Yeah. Trips to the left, tight right. They'll give it to Thompson, and he'll go nowhere. Xavier Robinson again, man. Stops it right at the 31-yard line. Trey Loveless is in there. Who else is in there? Demetrius Lofton. We've called Demetrius' his name a lot tonight. I mean, you had eight walls in on that tackle. What a <laughs> great pursuit by the ball by Coach Nate Masters' defense. They've had a great game tonight. It's been exciting to watch. Hold this high power Valdosta State offense to 17 points here late in the, eh, it's pretty early in the fourth, but what a great job by the defense. Second and nine, two receivers left, one to the right. They have an H back to the left. Durham looking to pass, has a man open, and he's going to fade away from him now. Just throwing it away. Xavier Robinson had a chance to intercept it. Ivory Durham threw a 98 mile per hour fastball right at the helm and Xavier Robinson, he's kicking himself for not catching that. Yeah, yeah I think that surprised Xavier. I don't know what <laughs> Ivory was throwing to there, but Xavier did not think that he'd have a, any chance of catching that, but nice play there. Third and long for the Blazers. Looks like Ben Whitlock's getting warmed up down there. You could see him the next possession. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They'll give to Tompkins up the middle to the 35. We will stop them short. Are they going to keep four? Pro How long are they going to let this play go? They're going to get it up to the 38-yard line, and they'll finally keep it and stop it there. It's going to be fourth and about two, and it's got to be four down territory for Valdosta at this point in the ball game with 12-10 to go on the fourth quarter clock. Yeah, this brings Black 
brings back flashbacks of right before halftime, same situation, fourth and short. Let's see if the defense can hold <laughs> strong here. You and your flashbacks. <laughs> Jamar Tompkins still in there at running back. They'll give it to him up the middle. And I don't think he got it, Willie. I think he's going to be short. They're going to give look him at the 40. The, uh, the guy up top is. No, look at that spot. Look at this. He's got it at the 40. He's the farthest the <laughs> ref from the ball to the Valdosta State sideline. He's giving them a full yard more than our sideline official, who's closer to the ball. Oh, man. Well, we came up and hit him once again, Xavier Robinson and Robert Carter. It was definitely close, but it wasn't. I mean, a how, full can yard. The, how can the <laughs> furthest official make that call? That's just beyond me. That's that same guy. Three receivers to the left, one of the right. Here comes Durham. He's going to throw it incomplete. Shaheen O'Neal got pressure. The senior has been doing that quite a lot tonight. Out of Grove Town High School. Second and ten. Man. Fun fact for you, actually. Uh -oh. the, last, the, the last time we won the Peach Basket here at Raylan Field, I took the Peach Basket and I wrote in the score of the game inside the Peach Basket. That's a little bit of an inside tradition that fans don't know about is that the winning team writes the score and the year inside oh, wow. the Peach Basket. They'll hand it to the McGill up the middle, and man, what a play from the backside. Amos Don. I'm going to be honest with you, Willie. Our linebacker core might be it's probably the best strength of our football team. You got Xavier Tom, uh, Xavier Robinson. You got Amos Don. You got Keith Harris, Jalen Tarver. I mean, we are really deep at the linebacker position. Just depth across the board for the defense is just, you can't say enough about the West Georgia depth on the defensive side. Coach Nate Masters can get creative. He can run out the second teamers in there. Fresh legs. Yeah. It's we, important to have. We bring in our third and long package right here. We've got basically seven DBs to get on the field. We're gonna rush five of them, one-on-one -on -one coverage with Robert Carter, good defense. Robert Carter going back and forth with BK Smith. It's fourth and 10 and should be probably punting time for Valdosta State. Yeah, nice coverage, one-on-one -on -one throw or one-on-one -on -one route here down to the Wolves sideline. Just a simple go ball, good coverage there. A little contact, but not enough to draw a flag. And Nice job by the Wolves defense. Ronnie Blackman will await the punt at the 25 yard line to punt it away. This is not Eston Thiel. This is Bryce, is that 99? Yeah, Bryce Robinson, it looks like uh, 96. I think it's John Miller, 98. Uh, yeah, this is John Miller. Uh, and that's no better either. Watch out, Trey Wiggins. Oh, Trey Wiggins, no. No, Trey. John actually played here and transferred from West Georgia really? to Valdosta, John Miller. Well, Trey Wiggins, I'm disappointed in Trey Wiggins. He dropped that punt on the sideline and shanked out of bounds Time at the 35-yard line. It'll be West Georgia ball Media. when we come back. Media timeout, lead 48-17 to here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans.
Back at it here, UWG Productions, Kiss 1 of 2.7, 10.22 to go, fourth quarter. West Georgia with a 48-17 lead. Harrison Frost to pass. He's got Ian Hinkle complete to the 40, down inside the 40 to the 33, uh, no, 36-yard line. Well, I think that tells you something about Coach Dean here. He's ready to put some more points on the board here. Oh, man. Well, I love it. Let's be aggressive. <laughs> In-state rival. They had a big game versus us last year in the playoffs. Let's keep the gas down. Two receivers each side. New receiver is Ashad Robinson in the ball. Or new running back is Ashad Robertson. The redshirt freshman from Richmond Hill High School. 9.45 to go on the fourth quarter clock. Harrison will hand it to Robertson. Nice cut back inside, and he'll get four on first down, maybe three and a half, second and six and a half. Because six and a half plus three and a half is ten. Wolves taking their time here on offense, bringing Ian Hinkle back in the ball game. Jacob Pinch in the game as a wide receiver, two receivers to the right. H-back now coming in motion is Hinkle. We will hand it to Robertson right up the middle to the 30-yard line, and he is brought down from behind there. Nice play. Uh, is that 54, I think? I think it was 54, Larry Brooks on the stop. About third and three now for the Wolves. They now have two tight ends in the ball game. Mason Yost, look at that, my favorite camera shot right there, the all-22 cam. Pinch to the left, Zay Britt to the right, Yost the tight end right, Hinkle the H-back, will hand to Robertson, right side, he'll find the hole, he gets it, 25 to the 24 yard line, first down West Georgia. Great run right there, just finding the open gap there and just shooting through for the first down, it's a great situation of football, knowing where the chains are and just putting your head down and getting it. Getting for it, Matt, we're getting it. 8.20 to go, fourth quarter. There's a shot of Robertson. Harrison Frost still hanging out, playing some football with us. <laughs> Two receivers <laughs> to each side. Four down lineman for Valosta. We'll put Robertson now beside him. And Frost is going to keep it. Harrison, go, go 15. Down. Go down. Don't, to the don't get hurt, please. <laughs> goodness. Harrison down to the 10. Oh, goodness. <laughs> You don't see that often. Great run and great pull by Harrison Frost. He saw daylight in the end zone. His eyes got big. <laughs> Good run there by Harrison Frost. First and goal to go. Big run by Harrison Frost to 15 yards, and he's brought down by Jackson Bull. That man from Fleming Island, Florida, Cade Perrion's favorite Atlantic Ocean destination site. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Javen West comes into the ball game. We'll hand it to Robertson. Right side, he'll bounce it out. And nice play by the linebacker, Aree Booker. The 5'11 sophomore out of DePaul Catholic High School in Orange, New Jersey. Wow. It's a long way from Orange, New Jersey to Valdosta, Georgia. It sure is. That's a long bus ride to Carrollton from Valdosta, Georgia. <laughs> it's not too terrible. You can go I-75 all the way, or you can go, what, US-82 to Columbus or Albany? That yeah, way? we would usually go to I-20 to 75 yeah. towards Atlanta, and then down south is yeah. the way we would go. Hands to Robertson, up the middle. He's down to the five, and inside the five to the four-yard line, a gain of about nine. Big run by Robertson, and it's third and goal from the four-yard line with 6.42 to go, fourth quarter. Would love for the redshirt freshman to get a touchdown right here. That'd be great for him to start his career as a Wolf. And Zach Obi is calling for somebody. Obi's calling for himself out, and here comes Hinkle in the game. We got 12 seconds on the play clock with 6.20 to go fourth quarter. Wolves in the lead, 48 to 17. They have controlled this one since about the midway of the second quarter mark. Handed to Robertson up the middle. Did he get uh, in? Uh, give it to him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Yeah. Good for a shot, Robertson. The red shirt freshman from Richmond Hill gets in. And math is hard, but I know that's six more points to 48, and it's 54 to 17 in this one. I love it, Matt. 
I think, is that the most points we've ever scored against Valdosta? I have a handy-dandy game note that could tell me, thanks to our the best SID in the NCAA, Jackson, or uh, Jared Bogus. I wanted to say Jackson Carson for some reason. Yeah, we've never scored 50 against Valdosta, so that'll do wow. that. Good snap. Ooh. Pellegrino's kick is up. Good. It did look no, good, it and it wasn't good. good. That all around wasn't the best, but we'll keep, we wanted an even number. We wanted an even number. 54 to 17, 606 to go. Fourth quarter. And our final media timeout of the night. West Georgia leads 54 17 on UWG Productions and Kiss 102.7. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. it here at University Stadium in Raylan Field as Brock Pellegrino will kick it off. He's done that quite a lot tonight, it seems like. He sure has with 54 points on the board. So how about this? North Greenville just beat West Alabama at West Alabama. They had five field goals to start the ball game. Wow. They, they're, they're all their attempts, they started out punt, punt, and then went three straight field goals. And I'll get to that right after this kick as this is Thompson from the 10 to the 20 to the 30, 35, and he stopped there. And before we get to that North Greenville West Al game, let's take a look at West Georgia's upcoming schedule. They'll be back at home next week for their final home game, the Shorter Hawks. Of the regular season. Yeah, final home game of the regular season. Yes. And then they're on the road against Delta State for a 3 p.m. kickoff and then at North Greenville. God, next week could be our last UWG Productions. Man, and we play on 12-12, 2022. We're North Greenville in December. Yeah. But. Oh, it's 11-12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 11-12. That's my fault. Yeah. December, man. <laughs> Hey, we're like, That'd be we're, like this, we're like that might be the national championship that date. We're like 55 days away from Christmas or something like that craziness. First down run by Seth McGill. He got maybe a yard. That was Festus. No, Jeremy Smith in on the stop, second and nine. But listen to this drive chart, Willie. In the so North Greenville had three straight field goals, six straight field goal attempts. They went five out of six. And then in the second half, in the fourth quarter, they went touchdown, touchdown, punt, and went on an 11-play, 75-yard drive to win the ball game. Wow, how about that? Durham rolling out, rolling out. Durham gonna just oh. air it out. He's got a man wide open, and he called it inside the 25 and steps out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And I think we got Cade Perry available. 
down for an uh, interview. Standing here with starting running back <laughs> Roger S. Mosley, who got injured at West Alabama. He broke his arm. But not only that, I'm standing here with Chucky. I mean, Chucky is the reason we are here tonight. It's 54 to 17. Roger has played at Valdosta High School. He's happy to see it. But hey, Chucky, let me ask you something. Who's your favorite sideline reporter? Oh, oh is it me? Oh my god. Oh, my, my boy, my boy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is it, guys. This this is how I hit the big time. Ch Chucky got cold with the beanie on his head. <laughs> <laughs> they put a beanie on Chucky at halftime cuz he was getting a little cold. Oh, it looks man. like our uh, friend Jalen Tarver comes up a little bit short. That gives us plenty of time to give a shout out to 316 Healthcare. It's an injury timeout presented by 316 Family Medicine. From newborns to the golden years, healthcare doesn't have to be complicated. From acute care to chronic disease management, the team at 316 Family Medicine are dedicated to making your healthcare experience a positive one. Durham. Drops back, plenty of time, just points. He's still pointing. Now he's going to throw it up in the end zone and intercepted out of bounds by Jalen Shepard. You can, to learn more about the good folks at 316 Healthcare, visit 316FamilyMedicine.us. Second and 10 now after the throw away by Ivory Durham. Man, he just scares me. I know he still gives you nightmares. Yeah, he's just a shifty quarterback who can get himself out of trouble in the backfield and find the, just extend plays and find open receivers down the field. It's hard as a defense, especially if you're playing man-to-man, -to, -man, to stay with the receiver that long. And he, he does a great job of uh, extending the play. Two receivers to each side. It's third and 10. Durham to pass. Looking, looking. Here comes Allen Johnson, and he's just going to throw it up out of bounds. That's got to be intentional grounding, right? I think he's outside yeah, of the yeah, pocket. He yeah, is a, he's outside the pocket. He threw it into the Valdosta State bleachers. So it's fourth down. Do they try an Eston field, field goal? I guess you got to go for it, right? Yeah, I think so. And See what they draw up here. But what a game for the for the yeah. Wolves tonight. I mean, probably the I think it's the most points, like you said, we've ever scored versus Valdosta. I think it's the most offensive yards we've ever had versus Valdosta. That that is definitely true. We have confirmed that. Durham to pass, looking across the middle, incomplete, intended for Seth McGill, and that'll be it for Valdosta on offense. It'll be another uh It'll be another turnover on downs and taking a look at the rest of Valdosta State schedule on the season for them. They have North Greenville at North Greenville, the Crusaders next Saturday. We've got a big win tonight. Then looks like, what, a, a, another matchup with West Florida, and then they play shorter at home to end the season on 11-12-2022. So that's a look at Valdosta State. And we get the to see. Lasers, and here comes Ben Whitlock. And good to see him out there. Young, talented quarterback here for the Wolves. Highly praised by the coaching staff for West Georgia. Probably going to be in handoff duty, but hey, it's good to see him out on the field. Marvin James gets in there now. Uh, let's see, Dedrick McFerrin gets in at center. Give to Ashad Robinson, makes a man miss, and he gets hit right at the 20-yard line as Raymond Lewis is also in the ball game for us. Scooter, Scooter Risper in the game. Javen West trying to get some more guys in. Marcus Gary in the ball game. Let's see, Jerry Mays uh, out of Eastside High School <coughs> is in the ball game. Cameron Cobb, a senior wide receiver in the ball game. So West Georgia getting a lot of guys in right now. Good for them. Robertson will hand it off right side and pow, big play there. Nice play by number 39, Daniel Jean, the freshman out of Miami Gardens. And it'll be third down for the Wolves. Do they let Whitlock throw it here? I would, I'd let. Well, I, I shouldn't ask you that. <laughs> I don't even of know Of course, why. of course we should throw it. <laughs> I don't even know why I asked you. Of course you're gonna say yes. Third and 11, we'll hand to Rashad Robinson. He'll get to the 25 and maybe the 26 yard line. Again, a six, but it'll be short. 
of a first down and that us uh, is going to take a timeout. Are they really? That should just show you the rivalry between these two schools. Timeout. That all to say. Their first charge. I bet I bet coach Dean Walk would like to Fake punt right here, right? <laughs> I yeah, bet Coach Dean would like to have that third down <laughs> call back and pass it. Goodness. Oh, man. They would call timeout here in the 242 in the fourth quarter with this score. That sounds about right. What sounds about right, though, is West Georgia controlling their own destiny, Willie. Uh, I mean, just there's nothing to hold your head about with the loss to Mississippi College and West Florida. Those two games are behind you now. You control your own destiny as far as we're concerned. Well, Coach Dean said it best is you got to just take one week at a time. You know, you got to go 1-0 and each week, focus on that week's opponent, and they've done a great job versus North Greenville coming out tonight, taking care of business. TCB off to shorter next week. Riley Mason will punt it away, and... A high spiraling kick, and we'll take a oh. bounce. And oh, I hit our guy, hit Javen West. Oh, and then the Valdosta player, the Valdosta player tried to pick it up. He what can, the, well, he, he, he can, he can do that since oh, it I did touch. Yeah, but he's just. I know he can, but why in the world would you? Because they now gave up. Yeah, it actually they gave, gave up first touching. What in the world was he doing? Now, why are they putting it back at the 39? I think it is dead where the ball is initially touched, even uh, if Valdosta tries to pick it up in advance. I thought so, too. But yeah. I mean, sheesh. Why, even, why are you even going for the ball? Well, why, uh, why, you, are, you calling, never, why are you calling timeout? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> Two, here's, yeah, the it, here's the replay on UWG Productions, clearly down by Javen right Javen there. Javen West, and look at Joe. Joe's running. <laughs> Touch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, man. Hey, Joe's ready to get him a tackle. He was. <laughs> Trips to the right, one to the left. Durham going to hand it to Thompson, and ouch. This gets stuffed once again right near the line of scrimmage. Some of our backup D linemen in the ball game. Big number 93, Jalen Miller. 96, Ramon Devison. Keith Harris in there on the stop as well. I say backup, but a lot of these guys rotate in. We've got so much depth on that D line. Trips now to the left side, a receiver to the right with 155 to go. They'll hand it Thompson again. Ramon Devison had him, and then Trey Loveless wrapped him up. After a gain of about three, It'll bring up a third down and five. 140 to go on the fourth quarter clock. This is a, sorry, Matt. This no, is just, as a, as a senior, this is a moment you just want to take in. You know, for the Shaheens, the Marzavion Dixes, this is just Harrison Frost. Take this moment in. Big win versus your rival in state. And Throw it out here to a receiver and He'll get near a first down marker and he'll get it up to the 50. First down, Valasta with 118 to go, fourth quarter. You just gotta, you just wanna enjoy these moments. I had an old coach who said, just, we wanna go home and write these moments in a book so you'll never forget them, just to look back yeah. and reflect. You know, Perry, what are, think about LaPerry on yeah, Perry, what, he, what Perry. he's gone through. Uh, Darius Clark is a senior getting some playing time. You talked about Shaheen O'Neal. I'm gonna throw my brother Joe Skinner yeah, out there. He's yeah. been through the ringer with all you guys as well. Mason Yost, another guy as they handed up the middle across the 45 to the 43 yard line, or Mason Yost the junior, it was Cameron Cobb I was supposed to look at. Hinkle, Jacob Pinch is one of those guys. Kyrie Jones, another yep. senior. Yeah, and this is just a game before the season starts that you circle and say, as a senior at home, six o'clock kickoff, in-state rival, this is a special moment for these seniors. Snap, hands to Thompson. Trey Loveless will help make the stop with Keith Harris. And we put Xavier Robinson back in the game to try to keep the yardage down. And haven't even marked the button. Oh. They're going to give Coach Dean oh, a Gatorade that's cold bath. Now. They're oh. going to give Coach Dean the Gatorade bath. That's Mar a cold Zay one. Marzavion Dix. Got him. Could, yeah, oh. I bet he's cold now. <laughs> and that'll be the last play of the ball game. 
Final score, West Georgia comes in back, or comes back to Carrollton tonight and gets a huge 54 to 17 victory over the Valdosta State Blazers. What a win tonight for the Wolves. Get a huge win back at home and continue to keep their destiny, control their destiny. And we're gonna have, I hope we do the Peach Basket presentation as the Peach Basket is down in the, uh, down in the south end zone. Hopefully they got some peaches to put in there. <laughs> as we're making our way in the middle of the field. Yeah, I see Cade, he's getting close to him. Yeah, Cade's getting him out of there and Cade's got Coach Dean at the 40. Well, Coach, you're a little bit wet, but hey, how about that performance? Listen to this. The most offensive yards and the most points in the history of this series, the 42nd game, 42nd matchup between these two teams. You've been a part of a whole lot of them. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. So proud of these kids. You know, they came out and played very well. How about our defense in the second half? Shut these guys out. This is an explosive offense. And shut them out in the second half. I just, I, I can't say enough about these guys. What a great group of kids we have. All right, got to capitalize on this. Keep it going. Next week, shorter week. It's Gulf South Conference play. We got it. We're going. We're going. Yeah, we're, we're moving on and, uh, and, and got to play enough. We're going to enjoy this one tonight. Come back tomorrow and go back to work for shorter. And, uh, you know, this second season, we talked about going 5 0. We got, we got our third one next week. Did you talk to the players about my outfit at all? Did it have anything to do with it? It may be. We may have to put you in a, in a tie every week. Okay, all right. I'm happy. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Appreciate it. His tie had nothing to do with that, with that win tonight. But, hey, Chucky did. Chucky it was, did. That's it right. It was all about Chucky. Uh, let's take a look at the final stats before we get this Peach Basket presentation at the 10-yard line. Uh, for West Georgia, a school record against Valdosta State, 596 yards of offense. We took all of our frustrations out of all those previous losses all the way dating back to 2018 out tonight. 77 plays for 596 yards. Jackson Carson went for 175 and three touchdowns. Harrison Frost was great. 26 of 34, 337 yards and four touchdowns tonight. I mean, it's so hard to pick a player of the game. I think you kind of have to give it to the – I mean, it's hard to really give a player of the game tonight, so we're just going to give it to the whole offense. You, you run 77 plays, almost 600 yards of offense. We'll give it to them. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you've, you've got to give it to the offense. What a performance by the West Georgia offense tonight in the passing game, the running game, no turnovers, perfect play on the offensive side. We've got the players with the peach. That, that thing might break now. It's pretty flimsy. <laughs> but what a great night of football. It's been so much fun to be a part of tonight. We had lightsaber fights. We had, we had Wolfie in the booth. We got peaches. We got the peach basket. It's a fun time to be a wolf. Write that score down. Congratulations to the West Georgia Wolves. This season is not over, ladies and gentlemen. When you come back next week against a pretty good shorter, a much improved shorter Hawks team, you take care of business, and then all eyes lead to the Delta on November the 5th. And we are looking forward to that matchup more than you know. Not looking forward to the drive or the flight, whatever, whichever one. Hopefully it's a flight. I, but, I ain't driving there. <laughs> we'll figure it out one way or the out. For Willie Candler, for Cade Perry, and our entire UWG Productions crew, shout out to Jeremy York and the Tennies tonight for great work as well. I'm Matt Skinner saying so long for Rayland Field and University Stadium. The West Georgia Wolves defeat the Valdosta State Blazers 54 to 17. Have a great night, everybody.